Bro, I've been gone so long. 800 DPI actually feels like my mouse is on the most slippery ice of all time. I've, I've quadruple checked that I'm on 800 DPI. I'm like, why is the mouse moving so fast, bro? This has got to be 3,200, maybe 1,600. You're telling me this is 3,200 DPI? Or 800 DPI? Sorry, we're a little confused and jet lagged. Excuse me, excuse me, Tomo. It does feel like I got my, my mouse sharpened. Hey, does Canada still exist um, like as a distinct cultural identity? I'm asking, here's the question that I'm going to ask. At your local Canadian tire, if you are Canadian, is there still an old dude in a red shirt who will sharpen your kids' skates for you? There's, all, there's like four aisles for hockey stuff, sticks, pucks, road hockey gear, goalie pads, and then in the middle of the two aisles... Or the four aisles, there's a there's a skate sharpening machine where you drop off your skates and the dude goes, <laughs> there is a stand with a skate sharpener. That's fucking sick, bro. It's all auto now. Hey, can I say, um, I had the misfortune of speaking with uh, an automated voice representative. Hello! The hotel you're staying at is experimenting with using voice AI for customer service. Please stop doing that. Let me explain to you uh, what happened, okay? First off, we might as well have, pardon me, something up on the screen. I apologize. My words are not going to connect well today. We just got back, like, literally eight hours ago. Like, our flight landed nine hours ago. Waited for our suitcase for a little bit. Got home. My daughter decided, like, she didn't want to go to sleep. Um, so here's what happened, Okay. We, we were on a cruise. You caught me. You caught me. We disembarked 8 a.m. on Saturday morning. We said, you know, our flight wasn't until 7.30 that night. We said, hey, let's take an Uber to the Kennedy Space Center. We, we had 12 hours. We went to the Kennedy Space Center. Great time. One of the best museums, if you want to call it that, that I've ever been to in my entire life. My daughter went on the KSC spaceport experience and got a cool silver coin from the dude running the booth because we explored the exoplanet Trappist-1 together. We waited uh, 40 minutes for lunch at the Orbit Cafe. And she, I mean, she was going crazy on that slide. I don't know if you've ever been to the, the planet play section of, uh, of the Kennedy Space Center. But anyway, it was great. Then we say, okay, so we were at the, the Space Center for eight hours or something like that. We were there for basically from opening till almost close. We said, let's go to the airport. We go to the airport. We say, hey, the kiosk told us to check in uh, at the desk because they needed more information. The lady behind the counter said, oh yeah, all of our flights have been canceled for today. And I said, oh, okay, um, why? And they said, we don't know, air traffic control, which seems kind of crazy. So we said, all right, whatever. And we start calling around to hotels uh, in Orlando, trying to figure out um, where we can stay. You know, we go to the hotel in the airport, and they're like, we're fully booked up as of like a minute ago. We try to book at uh, all the places that they gave us that are like, we're booked, but try these places. Someone should be ready. Nah, not ready. Um, finally, we ended up staying at a hotel. And I kid you not, I had no idea it existed. It's called Gaylord Palms which is, I'm assuming, named after the person who was the founder of the first one. Uh, and it was like the, the I don't want to say the only hotel that didn't have no vacancy or had some vacancy, but it was like, it was getting pretty close. So I called Gaylord Palms because uh, Google's AI search engine said it as a shuttle from the airport to Gaylord Palms. We book it, and then I look at their website, and they're like, unfortunately, we don't offer a shuttle. So I call, and I get an AI assistant that says, welcome to Gaylord Palms customer service. Could you please iterate your concerns, and I'll be happy to help you? And then I'm like, uh, yeah, do you have a shuttle to the airport? And then I wait, I hear like, <coughs> the fucking Amazon rainforest is being fed into the large language processing model, et cetera, et cetera. And then... Um, 
She said, unfortunately, at present, we don't offer uh, a shuttle from the airport to Gaylord Palms, but there's plenty of transportation options, including like a rental car terminal on floor one and arrivals or something. And I said, okay, thank you. And she said, wait, before you go, would you like to answer a few questions about your customer service experience today? And I felt so stupid because I, I, it's a robot, but I was still like using manners. I was like, no, actually, we're really busy. We have to go. And then the robot said, hang on a minute. I'm going to transfer you to someone who can help you. And I just hung up. I was like, I'm not going to call the customer service line. And now I got to do a survey about customer service. Like, what, what are you talking about? I know that how this sounds, but pay me. <laughs> if it was like, hey, you get a, a free, you know, mojito when you show up at the hotel. If you do the survey, then I'll be like, yeah, I thought it fucking sucked. Please hire a real person and tell the motherfucker at Google that spider crawled your website that they got the information wrong you just want me to do it for free zero chance not gonna happen now at the end of the cruise am i gonna fill out the fucking survey for the the dining team and the the stateroom host and stuff like that yeah that's like people's lives okay but for a robot no i'm not doing it for a robot you ever figure out why the flights were canceled yeah so there was a thunderstorm or two thunderstorms but I guess they can't tell you um, that it's a thunderstorm because then you might be mad. So instead, they have to say air traffic control won't let us fly. As if WestJet is like, bro, we would love to fly through the hurricane right now. Um, we, like, we'll nut up. We'll go balls on the table. We're not even sweating it. We'd love to get you guys home. But all oh, air traffic control won't let us because there's like a 1% chance, which is really, really high, by the way, but a 1% chance the plane will get struck by lightning and fucking burn up. Even if they weren't canceled, it could have been a Boeing. Uh, well, we were, on a, we were on a Max 8. And can I tell you something? It's a very comfortable plane. When the doors aren't coming off mid-flight, it's a much, we, we took a 737-6 from Orlando to Calgary, and it was cramped. It was fine. Like, it's air, it's air travel. It's not that bad. But then when we got on the 737-800, I was like, at least we might be experiencing a rapid decompression event in fucking style, bro. It's got the mood lighting. It's got the, as far as I know, all the doors were screwed on because we made it. Like, it was nice. Calgary's airport is actually not bad. I hate to hand it to him, but it's true. When we landed in Calgary at 10 p.m. Calgary time, I was like 100% sure that everything was going to be closed because my preconceived notion of Alberta is that it's all 65-year-old cattle ranchers, which is obviously ignorant. Landed, I was like, oh, fuck, everything's closed. Walked to my gate, there were like eight open restaurants. In Vancouver, there would not, everything would be closed. You would be trying to eat dinner from like snacks you cobbled together from like a Hudson News or something. I got to hand it to the Calgary airport. I also have to apologize to the good people of Orlando, Florida. When we went there in August, I was like at the Disney parks, everybody is paid to be nice to you and they're all very nice. As soon as you get out into the wilderness in Orlando, everybody's insane. But... This time, everybody was really nice. People were, were like very normal and cordial. And I'm starting to think that it's just like uh, last August, everybody was pissed off that it was like 40 degrees Celsius and 99% humidity. So we would be like, hello, could you drive us to the airport? And they'll be like, yes, but maybe you'll die like on the way. This time it was like very comfortable and everybody was just, they were driving relatively sanely. Do Americans know that there's like, as far as I know, no other country on earth where 5% of the population is wearing a shirt with their flag on it at any given moment? I, it's just something I'm struck by every time. And maybe, see, I look at it and I'm like, no other country does that because we know where we live. <laughs> and I'm sure if you're American and you do that, you're like, that's because you don't live in America. If you did, you'd be putting the flag on everything, bro. But I'm just, I'm always stunned when I... When I'm surrounded by Americans and I'm like, they're literally like, probably like one in eight people is wearing the American flag. It's crazy. Brazil does it too. Yeah, it's fair. It's fair. I wouldn't know, honestly. I think there's two kinds of people, you know, the last couple of days of the cruise. I promise this isn't, I, I have tons of material that I've already workshopped, okay? 
Um, like uh, my Uber driver recognizing me as uh, that effing guy who made the video about picky eaters and just swearing like crazy while my three and a half year old daughter was in the car seat right next to us. Otherwise, nice guy though. Um, failing some charisma checks. Like when I was at the, I, I think it was because I was growing like an old man beard because I was too lazy to shave. All of my normal quips that boomers usually laugh at, they did not find funny at all. Like at the airport, I was, I pissed at a urinal because all the stalls were uh, booked, you know, they were reserved. And as I was zipping up, I, I walked backwards and I bumped into a guy and he said sorry and I'm, I said sorry because we're in Canada. And then I said, looks like I need a backup camera. And he just grunted. And I was like, that's pretty good for off the cuff. I guess most people in the men's room like don't want to have some witty repartee like that. Also, I got a massage on the cruise and you're, they bring you into like an antechamber uh, before the massage where it's just you and a bunch of other people that are naked under their robes uh, waiting for the masseuse to come out and say your name. The masseuse came out and said, Ryan. And I said, yeah, that's me. And then we talked for like 30 seconds and a dude across the room said, uh, wait, did you say Ryan or Brian? And then she checked the thing and she said, Ryan. And he was like, oh, I guess you've got a Ryan and a Brian in here. And I said, hey, you must be the guy who keeps taking my Starbucks orders. And the dude did not get the joke at all. I think he thought that I was actually like threatening him or at least accusing him of something that he obviously did not do. And then they just pulled me into the massage room. And I, I didn't even get a chance to be like, do you get it? <laughs> And then, so after the, the massage is like half a massage and half a sales call. This is how my, my charisma was zero, bro. My, uh, uh, the, my masseuse, you know, they're like, okay, get dressed. And like, I have a consultation for you afterwards. And she's telling me like, she's like, your shit is all fucked up. Like, I know you said you don't have that much muscle tension. And you have the most sedentary job of all time, but your shoulders are like fucking disasters so let me she gave me like a regimen of stuff i need to do and of course it's all like you know you need this proprietary massage oil and this scrub and this gel and stuff like that so she pulled all three of them out and i pulled a little move that i've done on the massage before i said oh actually i don't need these because my wife had a massage yesterday and she bought them and she fucking nut checked me and said i checked your room data and your wife didn't buy this stuff and I was just kind of like stuck and I said oh well I don't think I need it and then she said okay that's fine but you definitely need another massage on the cruise and I said sure let me just go back to my room and check like when I have time and she's like oh we looked at your schedule uh it looks like you have time on like day six should I book it and I was like I just had to check with my wife first and then I, <laughs> I just signed the receipt and got the hell out of there man she was like doing some high pressure sales tactics it was crazy she's like employee of the month the messed up part is it was like the best massage I've ever had in my entire life she's got to be employee of the month because her massaging was great and then the sales like I mean, she's got to be moving tons of those fucking, like, Wish.com massage gels, man. No, I did not go back. But it's, and I'm, I swear to you, this is 100% true and fact-checked by real American patriots. Um, on the, there was, like, a day at sea where I guess they didn't have enough people on the, in the spa. So there was, like, a spa worker that was just going out and, like, asking people to, like, hey, you interested in coming to the spa? So I was just walking around and uh, someone with the spa uniform was like, sir, are you interested in getting another massage? And I said, actually, I've already been. I was like, this time I'm prepared for this one. And then she said, okay, sir, very good. And I looked back and I was like, that was my masseuse, bro. Like I, I, I was literally just misfiring nonstop on, like none of the quips landed. N nobody thought I was funny. They hated my jokes. I, my, my wife eats 60% of her meal. The server's like, was it okay? Do you want something else? She's like, no, 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 I'm good. I'm just not that hungry tonight. They take my plate. It's empty. I say, mine was horrible. They go, sir, really? Is there something I could do? Would you like me to pass on some feedback? I say, no, no, I'm joking. It's because I ate it all. 
that I said it was not good, but I ate it all. Do you get it? I caps the door. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. I was, I was trying so hard, man. I failed all the QTEs. I don't know what happened, man, but people on Twitch are loving it, so we got something going on. Also, so many people on the... I, I have a very elitist take, and I'm, I think that it's true, but I'm willing to admit that it's a, possibly a bad opinion, and you can minus two me for it. I think people in cities get a bad rap for being impolite. And people in rural areas get too much glazing for being nice and well-mannered. And I, this resurfaces for me on every single cruise I go on, where there's people from all sorts of environments, but a lot of them are coming from, you know, the South or the Midwest, and obviously, like, Indiana, you know, places where they're the only people around for, like, 100 kilometers. Um, and, hey, thank you, honey. Whoa, thank you for the gem. It's a sapphire. Um, that was one for everyone. Thanks so much. This is what you got on your pirate trip, right? Yes, one for everyone. One for everyone. Did you hear that? So here's, here's the genesis of this take. When we're on the cruise, there's 4,000 people. The ship is huge, but, I mean, there's lots of people. Plus, there's, like, you know... 1500 staff or something you're you're always the elevators are always busy you're always waiting in line to get places where everybody has to go etc cetera, etc cetera. it seems to me people who live in urban environments they got no problem they line up they uh wait their turn because they know that you've got a you know that's that's the way that you get in fast is by everybody you know, doing what they can to make it as fast as possible by just basically following the procedure. They hold the door for the elevator and let the elevator fill up. And then when, you know, you get on the elevator on floor two and you're going to floor eight, when it opens on floor three and it's full so nobody can get in and it opens on floor four and floor five and floor six, you don't get pissed off and go like, they got to do something to fix this. Bro, everybody's got to get to their rooms and like you, we're all fat and a little intoxicated because of the fact that we've been at a, a cruise for like six days. So like, just take the stairs or stop complaining. The, the amount of times we would have like, so here's the two very real stories. I got on an elevator by myself. There was a three person family, dad, mom, kid. When the door opened up, they went, <sighs> and then I got on, I was like, whatever, you know, some people go on vacation to relax and some people go on vacation to get stressed out. I hit my button and then um, moved away from the panel. We're on floor three. I'm going up to floor eight. The dad holds the closed door button. Like he's, he saw it on like an Instagram reel or something like that. Like if you hold the door button, it sends a message to elevator HQ that's like, send this shit straight to my room. Um, and then... It went like two floors up and it opened up because somebody else needed to use the elevator and like they were stressed out and the dad was like, well, I tried. Like it was, it was insane. Like it was like a, a, you could fit 25 people on the elevator. What do you think you get your own three person elevator on a cruise ship with 4,000 people? It's insane. And then on, like two days later, we, uh, we were on the elevator and it's super busy. Doors open up intoxicated woman in her 20s says, holy S, you know, there's, it's a Disney cruise. There's like 15 kids on the elevator, whatever, it happens. Um, they, they pile into the elevator. It's a, a, a man and two women roughly around the same age. The doors open up and then uh, the one family that was closest to the panel gets out. And then the woman says to what I presume was her husband, she was like, hey, can you hit the... Uh, our floor button, and he said, I wanted to, but the effing moron was blocking the panel. Sorry, brother. Well, everybody's trying to get where they need to go. You could just reach in and say, excuse me, or you could, you could say, hey, could you hit number seven or something like that? Like, what's going on? I'm not suggesting everybody that lives in a rural area is like this. 
I'm merely suggesting that you're used to this level of socialization if you're constantly bumping into people and saying, excuse me, sorry, blah, blah, blah. If you're in an area where you can, you know, fart in your backyard without your neighbor being like, whoa, what the hell did you eat? Then this is probably a little bit unusual for you. How'd you know they were from a small town area? I'm making an unfair assumption based on the NASCAR hat. And that might not be true. They might live in the biggest city in, in Kentucky for all I know, okay? I'm just saying, I think people are like in the, when people come to the city and they're like, oh, nobody's like polite to me in the city. Well, I'm like, well, you fucking wouldn't be polite either if you were surrounded by people all the time. If you were polite to everybody, you'd never get anything done. But then all of a sudden, you know, you got a, a 100 person line to get into the restaurant and people are like, whoa, this is crazy. They got to fix this. Or like you, sometimes you, so we went to like, the U.S. Virgin Islands, the British Virgin Islands, you go on like a, a glass bottom boat tour and people that work in like insurance sales are like, why are they doing it like this? Brother, what the fuck do you know about operating a glass bottom boat tour on Tortola in the British Virgin Islands? They've been doing, they've been in business for like a, at least a few years, I'm imagining at this point. It's crazy. Like you, you don't work in the industry and you're like, well, if I did it, I would give you a bigger cup of fish food or something like that. I'm like, you don't know anything, man. I, th I agree. Like there's, oh, there's, maybe it's not just North American. I think there's like a North American idea that you have to like optimize every situation you're in. You just fucking chill, bro. They're going to get, you're not the... Same thing when we get off the Disney cruise. People are like, I don't know why they do it like this. You got to be at breakfast at like 6.30 a.m. They, yeah, they serve you breakfast like at your table. And the same people who served you dinner eight hours ago are dressed in different outfits serving you breakfast. But like, I'm a little tired. Why do they do it like this? Why do they do it like this? I'm like, brother, this is like Disney cruise fucking 13,803. I think they got it pretty sore. I'm not saying there's not room for improvement in some aspects, but come on, man. Like they've been, they've been doing this for a bit. You really think like one 52 year old helicopter pilot's going to go on there and be like, Hey, you ever think about letting them sleep in for an extra two hours? Holy shit, bro. I never thought about it. We needed someone with your unique genius to, to blow this stuff up for us. I like your airport tweet. There is something fucking crazy about the airport, right? Like, you can't hear... I'm, I, I think that we need to recognize that there was too much airplane humor in, like, the 80s and the 90s. But now we're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. You can still make good jokes about air travel. Airplane food, maybe that one's off the table. But, like, we have a signal in our brain that's, like, pattern recognition, we're like, if this is about the airport, it must be Seinfeld, what's the deal? But like, is there really any excuse except for the fact that they have 200 foot high ceilings for the fact that you can't hear the announcement at your gate in any airport, even if you're sitting right next to the gate? Like if you're 50 feet away at a restaurant, best of luck, you know, you're, you're literally just hearing like some... Gregorian chants from a cathedral. Passenger, that's probably when it's hacky. Is when you do the voice. And then when you're next to the gate, it's like you can almost hear the the person talking into the walkie-talkie, but. Well, the, like you hear one word and then the data gets to the speaker. So you hear like, attention. Like it's, you, you just cannot understand it at all, man. But then I, I'm becoming this fucking guy who is, I'm, I, I never thought it would happen to me. And I'm like, you know what? They should keep it fucking shitty. Because as soon as they make it good, it's just going to play ads for like, you know, Pepsi nonstop. Keep the technology shitty, bro. Don't make it good and then the fucking play an ad for Ciroc Vodka every 45 seconds on my eight-hour layover, you know? Roller coasters, though, you're right. They got to fix roller coasters because I'm like... That, that shit is like... Sometimes they're like, you can't go wrong. Sometimes it's like, if your legs leave the domain of the vehicle, your feet are going to get cut off. 
there's like some 17 year old kid on like Alexander Graham Bell's first telephone is like, I also never know what to say when they say like loose objects have to be in like the seat in front of you. Are glasses loose? Because they're like not strapped to my head. They're just kind of like there's some there's some friction holding it there and there's gravity. But if we start spinning around like I don't know if that shit's going to come off. I hold them on my face on the ride. Dude, me too. But also like that. I'm, I get nervous on roller coasters, man. So I like to have two hands holding the bars, like to the point where I can see the indentations of my fingernails on the on my palms. And then with like one hand on the glasses and then one hand on this is like, oh, it's too scary. I reach around the bars to hold my glasses. Okay, you know, this is how I know we're all, you know, in the same. It's the colors of the wind, you know, man. What did she say? The crocodile and the otter are my friend. We're all in one fucking everlasting chain that goes from the beginning to the end. If you put your arm through the bar and grab your glasses and then you involuntarily clench your muscles during the entire ride, when you get off, isn't your like the inside of your elbow fucked up? Here's how anxious I've been on roller coasters. And it's, you know, whatever. I'm getting over it. Sometimes I will get off a roller coaster. You know, you get to the theme park at like 5.06 a.m. So you can rope drop fucking... Winnie the Pooh Bears, Honey Bucket Extravaganza. For some, some of the rides are like, uh, hey, get in a little uh, monorail and look at some puppets. And then some of the rides are like, we drop you from 200 feet into a little bucket of slime and you don't know which one it is until you, you see the ride vehicle come around at the front of the line. Sometimes you're like, holy shit, this thing doesn't even have seat belts. This is going to be relaxing. And sometimes you got to, they're like, take everything off of your face and body and then strap in this like safety system you've never seen before. And then some 11th grader making like three bucks an hour comes over and goes like, anyway. Then I get off the, it's, it's, so it's like, First ride is done, right? I get off the, the roller coaster and like my hands are hurt for the rest of the day. And you're like, why not just squeeze less hard? I would love to, man. Does being bald change the experience? Unfortunately, it does. Because like if you're at a theme park in the summer, you want to wear a hat so you don't get a sunburn. And then you got to take your fucking hat off on the roller coaster. And you're like, oh, fuck. All these people know I'm bald now. <laughs> And then you got to do like the, the walk of shame to the cubby with all this shit after it. And you got to like put your hat on and the, your people are like, he doesn't want people to know he's bald. And I'm like, I don't fucking care. I just need, I like. Anyway, by the way, I know Corey's here. I was going to talk about it. I don't think I'm going to do it, but I'm actually for the first time in 15 years of baldness, I am considering the, the 3% possibility of growing the horseshoe. Not Costanza, you know, one inch long hair, but like a, a fucking tightly buzzed horseshoe, like a, like a two week horseshoe or something like that. Why? There's something about it that's just like when I see it, I'm like, maybe it's the evolution of, of baldness. Hey, Hoffman VP, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Don't get me wrong, okay? So I'm shaved bald, and I've been shaved bald for a long time. But when I see like, and it, listen, if you're 24 and bald, don't do it. Go, go full bald. But I'm 35, you know, I got some gray in the beard. I got some wrinkles on my forehead. A little tight fucking horseshoe, it, it almost seems kind of stately. You know, it's like, it's, it's almost like, the comb over is like the most embarrassed bald. It's like nobody, nobody knows I'm bald. And then you just look in the mirror or like any reflective surface on a windy day. And you're like, nobody, as long as I can just maintain like this incredible one of a kind, like snowflake pattern of wisps, like nobody knows I'm bald. 
And then like shaved bald is like, I've accepted baldness, but I kind of am still obscuring my baldness because you can't see the hair pattern very well. It's like you're bald, but like you've gone so bald that I don't know how bald you are. But a fucking like two week, like just, just past stubble horseshoe that's like, check it out. This is my hairline. I'm 35. I have a family. Doesn't bother me. You want to you want to see my hair? I'm not I'm not ashamed of my hairline. Yes, I will have another. Mm, medium rare? No, you know what? Today, let's go rare. I'm the, I'm the CEO of business. It's almost like like that's the most that's owning baldness. I thought shaving your head was owning baldness. Rocking a, a, like being a bald guy who still goes to the barber is owning baldness. Because you're like, you know, why are you going to the barber? You don't have hair. And I'm like, because I want to look good, motherfucker. I want this shit to look sick. Corey tried to talk me back from the edge, though. <laughs> He was like, I've never considered it in my life. And I'm like, oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe I'll try it and I'll be like, I fucking look like I'm 72 years old. 2004, 1 billion views. This has to be um, Hollaback Girl or Gold Digger or Hey Ya. Or Beverly Hills. I'm gonna know it. It was released when I was in the 10th or the 11th grade. Wait, what was popping in 2004? Um, this Love by Maroon 5. By the way, can I say something? Okay, I'm not, I'm not Jamaican, all right? If you are Jamaican, you ever get a little fucked up and pissed off? thinking that like every single Caribbean destination plays Bob Marley on all the tourist stuff. I was, we were going to the British Virgin Islands. They were bumping like eight Bob Marley songs on the boat on the way there. I'm like, bro, this isn't Jamaica. It's not Jamaica. Oh, we can't hear. Okay, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I'll play it one more time. Hanging round downtown by myself and I've got so much caffeine cause I've been drinking iced coffee and there she was she warmed up my croissant yeah there she was my Starbucks debutante I want to snacks and coffee yeah something like that okay now one second still got it Ah, uh, okay, one second. It's, um, uh, Hoobastank, The Reason. Found a reason to be in the music video. They're robbing a bank, and this was for me probably the last little gasp of huge budget music videos that made the song that kind of sucked shit a little bit better and more compelling. They still make high-concept music videos. In K-pop, dude, that Nmix tweet left its uh, intended audience, huh? But like in a good way. I was talking about how the, the only two demographics that are outside with their families with one AirPod in are Gen X dads addicted to gambling and teenagers. I said the kids are listening to Nmix and the dads are trying to figure out if uh, Tyrese Maxley is going to hit the over on 3.5 rebounds. I looked at this shit, it had like 35 quote tweets. The NMIX stands founded and went, good job. NMIX stays winning. And I'm like, bro, I, I, it's been known two weeks ago. Did I say Dash, Song of the Summer? Also, people are insulting me. They were saying stuff like, uh, look at how far K-pop has reached. Even NL's talking about it. My wife, she, she plays K-pop for me all the time, bro. And sometimes I'm like, mm, it's not my favorite. And sometimes like when Dash came on, I was like, this shit's got some fucking mix-ups in it, bro. 
She showed me that IU music video where they're like, it's a Black Mirror episode and they're running in the mall through the cube. I know what's up. That's the only good end mix song. Bro, Roller Coaster's kind of hot too. Let's go higher. Holy. Oh, did you fucking honey dick you? They honey dicked you on the last note? When it when he goes super high? No way, bro. I didn't know it was possible to make that song worse. It is a bad song. Do not kill this guy with hammers. Music video was pretty hard, though. It's my homie's favorite song. I can't imagine. This shit is so sad when you, like, you think your friend is cool, then you're at his house, and he's like, let me play something for you, and it's the worst fucking top 40 radio rock soulless song of all time, and you're like, really, bro? I thought you had a rich internal life. Your ass really at home, like, listening to Huba Stank on repeat? Like, I, I was wrong about you, man. Like, you're still a cool guy. Don't get me wrong. I just obviously misjudged the situation. All right. After a long week away, we're back with the dolls. Uh, I was in the Eastern Caribbean. Because some, I, this is embarrassing. I was in the Caribbean, and I basically don't know where I was. Like, I could tell you the names of the places, but I could not tell you their relative geographic positions. I was in the British Virgin Islands. I was in the U.S. Virgin Islands, and I was in the Bahamas. Is that the, is that the Eastern Caribbean or the Western Caribbean? Western. Okay. Eastern. Never mind. <laughs> oh, man. That is the American zone. It's kind of crazy. I really, like, I can't say this without it coming across as offensive. But, um, like, it's, maybe it's okay that it's offensive, uh, in a way at least. I lived in Korea for a year, and the kinds of, like, uh, people that come from North America to teach English in South Korea, you meet some normal, nice people, and then you meet some insane people who are escaping from mistakes that they made in their life, um, and they're like, this is my only way out. You know, you, you meet like someone who just finished college and they're like, I can pay off part of my student loans, get some work experience and also travel. And then you meet some dudes that are like, I'm 42 and I just got divorced and I needed to do something. And I'm like, brother, this is not this is not supposed to be your domain. You could go for it. Don't get me wrong. But like, that's scary. When there's a 22 year old who just graduated from college, who's like, I'm going to teach English in Korea. You're like, OK, give it a try. When you're like, I'm. 53 and this is my third year you're like what it's i'm not saying you're doing anything crazy i'm just saying it's it's a different vibe and then the kinds of dudes that i was seeing who obviously had restarted their lives on the american virgin islands was like that cranked up to infinity like there were dudes who were just like i don't know how to explain it they were just pirates I don't know if maybe they were like involved in some kind of tourist operation, but they were just walking down the street dressed as pirates. And I know what you're going to say. Those are actors. But it was like they were method acting if that is <laughs> like they did not look like they came from uh, Fayetteville and then they'd been in the U.S. Virgin Islands for two days. It's like they had lived there for like years and they were having like rum punch at 807 a.m. and it was not day one Johto okay is a classic uh a classic question Johto is region two is that correct region two generation two flying poison crowbat easy poison final evolution fucking arbok bro Normal poison. Skorupi. Let's go with a safer bet. Normal Johto. Mmm. Bidoof. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Bidoof, not Generation 2. I, I would... He had Generation 2 written all over him, bro. 
Normal evolved by friendship seems very tough. Flying Johto, Ho-Oh, from the last episode of the anime. Ho-Oh did not look this fucking angry in the show. Am I crazy? I thought he was like a majestic bird that was like, it made you think about the possibilities of the future. And then like his character portrait is like, he's pissed off, man. <laughs> they made him vindictive. They gave him a fucking swoop and a smoky eye, bro. I thought he was like, uh, I thought he was like Mew. Like he was birthed from the, uh, like a pure angel or something like that. Apparently not though. I don't know. Maybe it's just a look. Maybe it's just a look. You got Torchic. You got Chikorita. Chikorita evolves in the fucking... Chikorita. Chikorita evolves in the fucking... She's got the flowers around her. Plume. Hmm. A canopy. Hmm. <laughs> um, a fucking... Vin no, I'm thinking of Venus. Yo! Venusaur G-Max, bro. Got the Jonathan Taylor Thomas look. And my body hair growth pattern, but you know, they're kind of owning it. Oh, dude, they made a, they made a G Max Eevee? Look at this, man. He just gets cuter. It's the only Pokemon that just gets cuter as it evolves. Rock Rough Own Tempo. <laughs> like and Rock Midday, man. Like and Rock Midnight. Holy, get some sleep, brother. Flying evolved by friendship. Who's the friendliest flying Pokemon? That's got to be fucking Togekiss, bro. Look at this guy. All right. Normal Johto. Fucking Pat Rat. Pat Rat, he looks pretty normal. Was he not Gen 2? They weren't at the bottom of the barrel by Gen 2. Johto, final evolution. Who's the fire lad from, from Gen 2? Torchic. <laughs> I don't know. He evolves into Blaziken. He evolves into Cinder Ace. Minior Meteor. What the fuck is Runericus? <laughs> is this real, man? Is this, what is this? This looks like some shit you draw at a museum and then you scan it in and it like shows up on the screen. What is it, man? It's the stroke is thicker than my Photoshop thumbnails. Normal poison. Weedle. Really? <laughs> I thought that was I thought that was good, man. Flying and evolved by normal evolved by friendship. Is there any Pokemon that are holding a heart or something like that? What about what about um Smoochum? Smoochum evolves into Jinx via friendship. This was a fucking tough one, man. Let's see most common. Oh, Centred! The, the mom said it's my turn to use the Xbox Pokemon in Pokemon Go. And you're going to be like, what does that mean? When you see him <clears throat> in Pokemon Go, he stands like this. Like, like a kid in your doorframe at 1 a.m. I threw up. And then you also see 300 of him every day if you play the game. Blissey, I, I probably could have gotten. Togetic? Oh my god, I said Togekiss evolves by a friendship, but that's fucking a little bit semantic, okay? Okay, obviously Togetic does evolve by a friendship. Maybe it's not semantic, maybe I'm just wrong. Uh, well, that was a fun one at least. Originally packaged in blue bottles, this flavored brand of water introduced in 2002 is a product of Gatorade and is marketed by PepsiCo. Propel. Holy cow, he's cracked, bro. <laughs> Ooh. How'd you get it? I was alive then. After Two and a Half Men, Charlie Sheen's next TV role was starring in this FX sitcom loosely based on a film from 2000. Oh, it's, it's got to be anger management, bro. That's the only thing that makes sense. Now, that is crazy because I haven't seen anger management, the show. I saw anger management, the movie two times. 
Didn't like it either time. It was kind of an embarrassing mark on Jack Nicholson's career, but he can do what he wants. Anger management does have a goaded gift, though. You're right. Jack Nicholson going... Wordle 3! Baby cradle can meow. <laughs> Good for the cradle, brother. Towel, pajamas, slippers. Pajamas, slippers, robe, and washcloth. Things you wear after a bath. That's fucked up, bro. Booty. Booty. Booty, bum, rear, can. Synonyms for your anus. She took a shit in the mother cradle, and no washcloth can clean the spoil. Things Rebecca Ferguson did when she called out a male actor she will no longer work with because he yelled at her. Am I still up with the modern discourse? You pretty much got it? Okay. <laughs> what happened to Kate Middleton, man? They're posting fucking Dolly 2 images of Kate Middleton? The hands are all fucked up. The skirts don't match. What, is she okay? What's going on, man? Also, who is Kate Middleton? Words with an E and an O in them. Words where the only vowels are an E and an O and you, yo, would you, would you fucking, would you fucking do, yo, okay, no, I'm, I am mentally ill, I'm mentally ill, I'm seeing patterns that don't exist, I'm the inspiration for Darren Aronofsky's hit film pie, I'm performing a self-trepanation, the New York Times has infected me with the mind virus, but I'm not wrong, right, EO, EO, hello, honey. Whoa, you painted your fingernails. No. Oh, is it a Band-Aid? No. It's tape. No. What is it? It's a, a nail decoration. A nail decoration. Mommy did decoration. It looks so nice, honey. It looks so cool. I want it too. Maybe after work you can do it to daddy, okay? You Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks for visiting. She's got the four-syllable words down. Yeah, she can read. It's uh, kind of amazing, to be honest. Like, she can't read everything, but she can... You know, the clip where she could read was from like a month ago. She's fucking literate now because <laughs> the thing is is like once you learn how to read like you can you know read even more right <laughs> you know is, so obviously she didn't get the intelligence from me but it's like when you can't read you're basically just looking at nothing but as soon as you can read a few words you can start like piecing the everything together it's like programming. It's like it's when, once you learn the syntax and you're like, oh, I can actually like make applications now. And while you make the applications, it firms up your knowledge of the syntax and then you get exposed to higher order problems and then you solve those problems and those become foundational and you just keep, you just keep going. And then eventually, I don't know, sometime around 2014, everybody fucking lost it and every application just keeps getting worse and worse and worse for some reason? Why the fuck do we have paper towel dispensers that can run out of batteries, bro? What the fuck are we doing as a society that the paper towel dispensers can run out of batteries? We had it! The automatic sink, if it works, I understand. Maybe you don't want to touch the tap. But the, we had the pumps on the soap dispensers and the, you smash the fucking hammer on the paper towel dispensers and the paper towel comes out. Now listen, I'm not going to let you gaslight me either. It's, oh, it's environmental, it's environmental. You wave your hand in front of the fucking thing, one centimeter strip of towel comes out. Your ass is not drying. You didn't wash your hands adequately if that's enough to dry your hands, okay? You gotta do it like five fucking times. And then you get like one normal regulation size strip of paper towel. Shit is so annoying. And so now I feel like they, they're like, 
They've got some nanny tech in there that if you, if you wave your hand too fast, they're like, sorry, you don't deserve this paper towel. Who do you think, what, what society do you think made you, motherfucker? You are subservient to us. I need the paper towel. You don't tell me how many paper towels I need. Oh, you're at your, a lot, you're at your quota of paper towels today. Fuck you, bro. Give me the paper. We, the people, made you. And you try to deprive us of the fruits of our labor? And I meant that fucking tweet that I tweeted. That was like motion sensing sink, manual soap dispenser, fucking Dyson hands-free air dryer. What are we doing here? How are we shaming people? Are we shaming people for not washing their hands for 20 seconds? Or are we shaming people for, oh, you're killing the environment because you need two paper towels to dry your fucking hands. Make up your mind how we're going to be sanctimonious today, okay? You know that, I don't know if it's a tweet or a Tumblr post or something, that was like every 50-year-old programmer has one piece of technology in their house. It's a printer and they keep a gun next to it just in case it goes off. That's how I'm starting to feel about society. <laughs> I'm, I know this is the great contradiction of my life is that I, I rely on this technology to work. So that's not lost on me. I am participating in society while criticizing it. But at the same time, you got to stop making tech, boys. You got to stop. What we've got right now is most of it is pretty bad. Spend the rest of your life making it better and then don't make any more. Okay, you did you did what you could. I need money, though. I understand that, but, like, <laughs> somebody has to stop you, man. <clears throat> Hello, honey. Mommy has no flashlight. Oh, my God. What are you doing with that flashlight? It's for looking for you. Oh, you found me. For hidden potions. Oh, for hidden potions. No, for hidden potions. Oh, hidden persons, like myself. Yeah. Okay, honey. I think you should go up and see mommy. Daddy's, daddy's doing a puzzle right now. Okay, come. I can't come. I got to get some work done. Can you say hi to Chad? Hi. But can you make a surprise? Can I make a surprise for you? I'll see what I can do, okay? For now, go have some fun with mommy, okay? But mommy, I know. You got lots of surprises, though, right? I need more. You need more. <laughs> And that's why we can't stop making the tech, man. That's why we can't stop. By the way, I don't know if you can see the light reflected on my face right now. I w There's a, a culture on the Disney cruise, okay? Of um, It's called pixie dusting. You give other rooms on the cruise ship uh, little trinkets and gifts and stuff, especially if they have kids. Because the kid, you, What's your favorite part of going on a Disney cruise? Surprise. The surprises, right? I wish all families that are putting 35 million lumen flashlights and LEDs into these things a very stop right now, please. Any parent will tell you, I, the kids love it, but what are the parents doing putting like a, a laser pointer that could take down a 737-8 Max in the mailbox? Like some, they, they put in like, oh my God, you scared me. <laughs> They put in like candy and stuff, and I'm like, that's great. I'll have half, she'll have half. She's three and a half. I'm keeping her safe, right? <laughs> but then they put in like a, literally like a police flashlight, and I'm like, why would you put that, why would you give that to a child in a, in a confined space? Like we were on the cruise. Here, come here, come here. And uh, she said, Daddy, close your eyes. And I said, okay. I closed my eyes. And she said, okay, open them. And she had two incredibly strong LEDs that came into our like ship mailbox. And she was holding them like a centimeter away from her eyes. And I was like, you gotta stop that. Why, why were they giving us these LEDs in the first place? Yeah. The other, the, the food is good though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, why would you put my chapstick under the desk? Now I can't get it. Here, go, go up and see mommy. She's calling you. Bring your flashlight. Okay, okay, go ahead. Okay, connections. Towel, 
robe, <laughs> bath slippers, bath washcloth, things you use in a bath, things in a spa locker room. Hey, Mr. Pony, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. Things you can uh, do to a child. You can spoil it. You can cradle it. You can mother it and you can pamper it. Okay, we got there. What? You can baby it, not, not mother it, I guess. What? Treat with excessive care. Cat, okay, cats blank. I'll give you that one. I made the same mistake. Listen, I'm, I'm very pro connections, but I do want to say, I guess, well, whatever, they kind of got me. <laughs> Look, I'm going to keep the dolls going. I'm sorry, I got to go pee though. My bladder's on Eastern Standard Time. I'll be right back. I apologize. It's got the price on the box. You got to be some kind of person <laughs> to, <laughs> to fucking buy 200 sticks of double mint gum at Costco. You better be 98 years old. <laughs> oh, man. Original 35 cent gum. Okay. I don't think it was 35 cents originally. I bet it was like uh, a, a single penny farthing. But let's think about this. A stick of double mint gum has to cost like two cents. <laughs> and there's maybe, maybe four cents and there's 200 sticks in the John. Okay. So that's like eight bucks. I think it's going to be six ninety nine, bro. I don't. I think this is price to move. <laughs> Ooh. But here's the thing, right? If this is actually what the packaging looks like in Costco, you're not paying twelve bucks for it. If you're paying twelve bucks for it, that's that's non Costco prices. Today's price is not yesterday's price. You got to be getting a bargain. You're probably right. They probably put 12 bucks on the box so that you're like, holy cow, a lifetime supply of double mint gum for like 45% off. By the way, can I tell you, I had two very interesting Uber experiences while we were in the United States of America. The first was when the Uber driver recognized me at the end of the ride and said, hey, random question, are you a streamer? And I said, I am. And then he said, are you the streamer who did that clip about the picky eaters? And I said, yes, that's probably me. And then he was like, I was looking at you in the mirror and I was like, is this the effing guy? Is this the effing guy who did that picky eaters thing? This effing guy. And I was, I was just laughing and going, ha ha ha. You know, he was, he was listening to Fahrenheit 451 audiobook. He seemed like a cool guy. He said, if you have any questions about Orlando, let us know or let me know. But then I also had an Uber drive where I was 100% sure that Kate and I were going to be killed, full stop. What happened? On the day we were leaving Orlando to get on the boat, we got an Uber from our hotel uh, and we went into the ride. We loaded in our suitcase and stuff like that. The guy seemed very nice. Uh, we got to like the first turn. We drove like 100 meters. And then he said, whoa. Did you cancel on the app? What happened? And then like we looked at his little kiosk and we looked at our phone and like somehow the ride had become disconnected. And uh, he said, wait, so like this happens now and then? Do you want me to bring you back to the hotel? And I said, yeah, I guess we can do that. He said, or I could just drive you all the way to the cruise terminal anyway and you could just you know venmo me or whatever and i said okay um let's go back to the hotel but kate was like that sounds good <laughs> and i was like you know what we're gonna get killed i was like checking my phone to make sure that like we were still moving to the east everything ended up working out just fine but there was like 45 minutes of me being like this is the end of my life Hi, honey. Whoa, such pretty nails. And, and you get to have it, too. Yeah, I'll take some when I'm finished, okay? You can take the green one. Okay. And you like to come to the tea party right now. I can't do a tea party right now, honey. Can you do a tea party with Mommy and Daddy will do it after work? Sorry. Oh, my God, nails. 
Only sparkly nails can do the tea party? Yes, only sparkly nails. Oh, so you invited me to the tea party, but I'm not even allowed to come? <laughs> and then people are saying he was just cutting out Uber. Honestly, cool rock, honey. You can keep it. Okay, you can take that rock. I kind of respected it. If, as long as he didn't kill me, I was happy to pay him cash and cut out Uber. I would much rather do a taxi than an Uber, except for the fact that, like, Probably the last 10 taxis I took before Uber came to Vancouver drove like 40 kilometers an hour over the speed limit, two centimeters from the bumper of the car in front of them while talking on their cell phone incredibly loudly the whole time and like asking me the route that I want to go to the airport. And I'm like, I don't know, brother, you're literally a professional driver. That's what my Ubers do now. <laughs> well, we need a new Uber, man. We need we need comfortable Uber. You should be able to hit like a button on your Uber drive that is like, don't drive fast. Or if you're in a rush, you could fucking click drive fast. But I'm like, I would, I would give you like an extra 5% tip if you just didn't have me like holding the handle in the Chrysler Pacifica the whole time. <laughs> Movies about King Arthur. Green Knight, Monty Python, and the Holy Grail, Sword in the Stone, I'm assuming Excalibur. Anaconda, Deliverance. Movies with John Voight. A Ghost Story. A24 elevated uh, supernatural horror film starring Casey Affleck. The Jungle Book, Pete's Dragon. Movies directed by John Favreau. Okay, he did not direct... Um, you might not have directed any of this shit. Old Man and the Gun, Clint Eastwood, Snake Eyes, Nicolas Cage, The General, I'm going to assume that's John Voight, The Aristocats, animated Disney films. No. Hmm. Movies with a, with a treacherous snake. Snake Eyes, <laughs> The Jungle Book, Anaconda. No! Deliverance goes here. Where the fuck is John Voight, bro? Where's Deliverance, Anaconda. It's possible John Voight is in The Old Man and the Gun. It's possible that he is in Point Blank. Yeah, he's... What is this? Not John Voight. Mm-mm-mm. <clears throat> Five swaps left, huh? I don't know what these are. I know what deliverance is, but the rest of them, I'm like... Oh, you're right. Green is the connector. Green is the connector. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It's, uh, with five swaps, it's all coming together. Um... Disney's animated classics. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, what do we got? Two swaps? Hi, you okay? Oh, you took your nails off? I took, a, I took my ugly nails off and I swallowed the black cat. Okay, that's, that's fine. Here, why don't you bring your chair over here? Here, here, here. I thought you wished to get one, but mommy said, no, daddy just wiped. It's Dev Patel. It's Jared Harris. You know anything else about the Green Knight? No. I think it's a tale about Sir Galahad's um, quest to quest. make a name for himself in the court of Camelot and uh, the absurd levels that he's willing to go to make that happen. Perhaps even the self-destructive uh, tendencies he's willing to embrace in order to get just a taste from 
the goblet of fame. I got this from Cabanas. What? I said it. <laughs> it's not Galahad. It's Sir Gawain. Okay. Isn't that like a menswear store? No. <laughs> I don't think Jared Harris is in the Green Knight. Bro, he plays the Green Knight, right? I've never seen it. Um... The green, the green knight. The green knight. The green knight. That's Dev Patel? No, Dev Patel is, is Sir Gowan, bro. Jared Harris is the tree man. Oh, no, that's Ralph Innocent. You're right. I don't know what I'm talking about then. I got two swaps left, right? This is it's un, it's mathematically doable, but I don't know. Wait, this has got to be John Voight, bro. John Voight is not in the Holy Grail. So he must be in this John right here. No, no. Chad, is it possible? <laughs> I'm so washed. What happened, man? What happened? Okay, let's see. Excalibur point blank, the general deliverance. It's got to be John Voight. D Director John Borman? The Green Knight, Pete's Dragon, The Old Man and the Gun, Ghost Story. Director David Lowry. Brother, that is... I respect them for going... This is a tough puzzle, man. These were all composed by the Sherman Brothers. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow Waiting at the start of every day There's a great big beautiful tomorrow and tomorrow is just a day away. And then uh, all these titles have snake in them. Uh, a snakes, I see. It's not tough if you understand the game. Okay, number one John Borman fan in the chat. I wasn't trying to insult you. Like, uh, Deliverance, you know, it has a legacy beyond just... Ding -a -ding -dum 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 -dum. Tea party! Yay! I don't know John Borman, but I understand the game, so I got it. Fucking dismissive ass. You could just say it was tough, and then I ask if you got it. You gotta, like, embarrassingly go, yeah. Instead, you gotta be like, just so you know, I'm smarter than you. Fucking, okay, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Go back to being interviewed by Vulture about how, like, science fiction isn't a documentary. Pedantic ass. Ah, it's too much power. I apologize. It's too hard, but that... Dude, seeing the plus twos after someone insults your intelligence feels fucking... Feels sick, bro. You recognize I haven't been able to yell at someone for, like, ten days, right? Hancock to Full Metal Jacket. Jason Bateman... Will Smith, Charlize Theron, Vincent D'Onofrio. It's easy. You go Will Smith, Men in Black 1, Vincent D'Onofrio, Full Metal Jacket. That's, that's your, your hot swap. So let's just say we got that. That's a gimme. Let's go. Let's, let's mix it up a little bit. Let's, let's try to take a slightly different tact here, okay? I know where I want to go, okay? It's... <laughs> Eddie Marzan... The world's end. Simon Pegg, some British movie that has Steve Coogan in it. Tropic Thunder, Jack Black, Saving Silverman, R. Lee Ermey. Let's make the prophecy come true. Eddie Marzan, The World's End. Simon Pegg, a British movie that also features Steve Coogan. <laughs> Before, before he blew up, maybe just post Shaun of the Dead maybe would be where I would look for this personally. And then we got to find something that looks extremely British, like Darren Brown, Behind the Mischief, or Scrat's Continental Crack Up. Here's what I'm thinking. We're going to go Run, Fat Boy, Run, Hank Azaria, Gross Point Blank. <clears throat> Jeremy Piven, Serendipity, Kate Beckinsale, Sahara, 
Um, Rain Wilson. No, Steve Zahn saving Silverman. Run, Fat Boy Run, Hank Azaria, Gross Point Blank, Mini Driver. No, Jeremy Piven. Jeremy Piven, bro. Serendipity. Kate Beckinsale. Sahara. She's not in fucking... She's not in Sahara, bro. Why did I think that Kate Beckinsale was in Sahara? Who, who's the, the female lead in Sahara? Penelope Cruz. Penelope Cruz. Now make fucking Kate Beckinsale. All she's done is the Underworld films, man. Or, uh, no, I gotta, uh, there's no choice. You have to go Van Helsing. And then maybe like uh, Michael Sheen played the bad guy. Oh, Richard Roxburgh. What the hell is this, man? They filmed this shit in Bucharest. So we, we simply find another, another tact, okay? So we're going to go Hugh Jackman. Hmm. The Greatest Showman. Zac Efron. Neighbors 2. Sorority Rising. Chloe Grace Moretz. Aaron Taylor Johnson. Bullet Train. Hiroyuki Sonata. The Last Samurai. Tom Cruise. Tropic Thunder. Jack Black. Saving Silverman. Arlie Ermey is in there somewhere. Okay? Now, I need you to keep me honest on this one, okay? Hugh Jackman. The Greatest Showman. Zac Efron. Neighbors 2. Sorority Rising. Chloe Grace Moretz. Kick-Ass 1? No. Kick-Ass 2. Bullet Train. Hiroyuki Sonata. The Last Samurai. Tom Cruise. Tropic Thunder. Jack Black. Saving Silverman. R. Lee Ermey. Sorry, sir. R. Lee Ermey. Full Metal Jacket. Time. <laughs> Let's go, bro. Why do you do it like this? Because it's funny. And also, I think it's a good exercise for your brain to uh, try to keep as many links in the chain going as possible. Also, we did know it was two. Yeah, we said Will Smith, Man in Black, Vincent D'Onofrio, Full Metal Jacket. He played freaking um, Gomer Pyle. Show the shortest to confirm your first guess. I don't need to. Will Smith is in Hancock. That motherfucker is definitely in Men in Black. He plays Agent fucking J, I think, or K. And then the, the aliens played by Vincent D'Onofrio, who is Gomer Pyle from Full Metal Jacket. It is kind of crazy to think, like, I mean, obviously it was talked about a lot in the moment. But my man really slapped the host of the Oscars and then won best actor like an hour and a half later that's a hell of a night that's not a forgettable night that's like a once in a lifetime sort of experience <laughs> that's crazy resilience a noun me nuts on the table we're going we're going five for five for medium guaranteed otherwise you can chop one of my nuts off hyrax a noun meaning any it crashed the game crashed I'm sorry, <laughs> game, the game crashed. <laughs> one second, one second. I, did I hear you right? Hyrax. A noun meaning any of a family, Procaviti, of small ungulate mammals of Africa and the Middle East, mm, okay, characterized by thick-set body with short legs and ears and short rudimentary legs. tail, okay. feet with soft pads and broad nails, and teeth of which the molars resemble those of the rhinoceros and the incisors those of rodents, called also coney, dassy. The word hyrax originates from the Greek word hy- Nuts on the table, boys. Nuts on the table. <laughs> hieroglyphics, a noun meaning hieroglyph. Hieroglyphic. That's what we get for hieroglyphics? I, I just got the entire genomic sequence for like a rat that lives in the Sahara Desert. And they're like hieroglyphics, you know them when you see them. Fleetness, an adjective meaning swift and mo- Fleetness, I'm going to- I'm going to add that one to the vocabulary. He had the fleetness. Protectorate. A noun meaning government by a protect... Easy mode. Next round, we made it. Surcease. 
a verb meaning to desist from action. Also, to come to an end, cease. The word comes from Cease! Or molu, a noun meaning golden or gilded brass or bronze used for decorative purposes, as in mounts for furniture. Mulu originates from French, meaning ground gold. Or molu, a noun meaning golden or gilded brass or bronze used for decorative purposes, as in mounts for furniture. Mulu originates from French, meaning ground gold. Or molu, a noun meaning golden or gilded brass or bronze A-U used for, for decorative gold. purposes, as in Mou- mounts for furniture. Mulu originates Mou- from French, meaning ground gold. Lou. Or molu. Or a noun molu. meaning golden or, or gilded brass. Oh, <laughs> I thought for sure, bro. I thought for sure. She was looking like a type of sausage at a New Orleans restaurant. I thought we had it. Codswallop. A noun meaning words or I. So give me, I use it every day. Lebensraum. A noun okay, meaning territory believed. As- Listen. Jains. A noun meaning an adherent of Jainism. The word Jane originates... Think I didn't play Crusader Kings 2, motherfucker? One word wrong. Or Molu. Oh my god, they fucking anglicized the shit out of this. They beat that word's damn ass when it came over, man. Or Molu? (laughs) They even took out the AU that indicated that it was gold in the first place? They said, fuck that, man. Gold in French is OR. I like your nurse's uniform, guy. These are OR scrubs. Oh, are they? (laughs) Oh, man. Am I really playing Isaacal? No, I can't. I'm sorry. It can't be done. New York Times strands. Find hidden words and uncover the day's theme. Find theme words to fill the board. Banana, apple. Fruit, lime, I get it, okay. Theme words fill the board entirely, no words overlap. Find the spangram. It describes the puzzle's theme and touches two opposite sides of the word. Need a hint? Find non-theme words to get hints. Okay, today's theme, to put it mildly. Remark. That's not a correct word. Understandable? Other words that I see, Mm. mid, (laughs) Hmm. (laughs) Peters, Hmm. do, Hmm. they have to be longer than that many words, I suppose, or longer than that many letters, sus, Said. Hmm, a hint, please. Darn. These will be fake swear words. I understand. Now I know what I'm looking for. Drat. Fooey. What? Okay, never mind. I'm okay. What? That fits, bro. Moot me. <clears throat> Dang. Dang. Sheesh. Crud. Mm. Poop. Poop. <laughs> poop is a, is a mild swear word for shit. Heck. Okay. You got me on that one. And it must fill up the whole word. Isms. You. F. Misms. There we go. That's a big one. Are we done here? Shoot. Jeepers. Hang on, it's all coming together. Golly. Fudge. And gadzooks. All right, that's reasonably fun. I could see that. Nice job finding the theme words and the spangram. D.L. Guiga says you used two hints. All right, D.L. Guiga, I saw your ass say you didn't even know that Christopher Nolan directed The Prestige. It's actually like his best movie, probably. You know, we've all got blind spots, brother. Where was your ass when Silicon Valley Bank was getting dragged for not adequately assessing their tail risk? Nassim Taleb. 
really could have used you last March. What happened to loving Tenant? I still love Tenant. Tenant is Tenant is his best movie. Yeah, man, Tenant's his best movie. Absolutely, bro. They gotta study airport construction. Hey, four hundred people are about to get in a cylinder with one tiny bathroom in it. You know what restaurant would go hard here? Chili's. What are you thinking? Are you stupid? Couldn't they put a restaurant with like some vegetables, bro? They're like, no, here, I'll tell you what, $7.99 margaritas and deep fried chicken gizzards. I got to say, though, you ever eat at uh, Bahama Breeze in the Orlando airport? Coconut shrimp did go pretty hard. Although I will say this is a, um, a stereotype, I'm sure, of myself. They said, what do you have to drink? I said, uh, I'll take this IPA. And he said, our waiter, he said, um, I don't know why we have it on the menu. We've never had that. But what we do have is this local Orlando IPA. And I said, okay, I'll have that. And then he came back three minutes later and said, uh, actually, we don't have that either. We have Budweiser, Stella, and Shock Top. Is there anything I can get you? And I kid you not, I said, can I have the menu back? He gave me the menu. I looked at it for two minutes and I said, I guess I'll take a shock top. <laughs> not my favorite, but it's all right. I mean, I'm getting on an airplane. I'm not too picky. I'm very much an IPA guy. Also, I got uh, verbally abused at the... Orlando Airport, there was a convenience store where I bought some snacks that also had a bar in it. And the dude uh, came up with his empty glass and said, hey, can I get a Modelo? But please rinse the glass. I had an IPA in it. And I said, did you like it? And he said, no. They have a Belgian beer, a Mexican beer, and uh, an IPA. And if I had my choice, I would rather go to Belgium or Mexico instead of wherever they make IPAs. I was like, all right, buddy. I laughed and said, haha, good point. But in my head, I was like, I'm, I'm flying back to Vancouver in like 15 minutes, dickhead. <laughs> we don't want you either, motherfucker. Dan, how is, um, is it too early for me to hmm, hop on the New Bennett Foddy esque. Because I'm sorry, I'm not playing Balatro. It's not happening. Why? I'm not playing three hours of Balatro while 9,000 people go, hey, you're stupid, do this instead. And like half of them are right, and half of them have no idea what they're talking about. Shit is like insanely frustrating. We loved it though. You show me the incentives, I'll show you the behavior, brother. Back me up, DL Guiga. I'm doing the climbing game. Uh, have I really had Photoshop open for 11 days while I've been gone? I mean, that's just unforgivable. <laughs> Please turn off your PC. Mm, change things in your life before you ask me to change things in mine. I know one of them is easier than the other. But one of them has more value to you, I promise. Are you not worried about an electrical fire? Bro, that's what the firefighters are for. Not worried about it. Listen, I'm not saying fire doesn't exist. I'm just saying, it's like getting struck by lightning, man. The whole house is fucking wired up, dude. When you go, I, I, this is a real question. When you leave your house, do you switch off the fucking like the electrical main? Do you flip like a big switch with a large coil coming out of it and blue sparks and stuff like that? That's fucking crazy, bro. Do you live in little house on the prairie? In the modern world, you just tank it. If your house burns down, you got insurance. It's that simple. I, I turn my dishwasher on, and then I go to sleep. If that fucker springs a leak, I deal with it in the morning. My ass is not going to live my life to the fucking schedule of my dishwasher. Oh, I can't sleep right now. A machine is washing my dishes for me. You know, we invented it to make our life easier, right? 
Now I gotta be, oh, I can't fucking go to bed. My, the dryer's running. What if the fucking dryer lights on fire and we all die? It's not, that's why you clean the lint trap, bozo. If I had to guess, I would say hold, okay. Regroup, re regroup, brother, regroup. <laughs> okay, okay. Ready? Maybe maybe a swing? That's so dude. My my cat at uh bedtime when I try to close my bedroom door. I had a diet coke the other day, never again. Uh I'm sorry to say that you're a dinosaur. Coke Zero is actually taking over. I will say, though, I had a great idea. The only corporation that I respect is the Coca-Cola Corporation. Everybody's allowed to be wrong from time to time. <laughs> Sorry, but it do be tasting good. Kate saw a guy uh, on the Disney cruise. Americans love to experiment with their fountain drinks. You've got to admire them. They're a, a, a naturally curious people. They, um, th this person that she saw on the Disney cruise... 80% of the cup Diet Coke slid it over to the regular Coke, filled up the last 20% with regular Coke. She said, this guy is an innovator. And then I got to thinking, you know what they need? If they're going to keep making dog shit Coke freestyle machines that like barely work with antiquated touchscreen technology, there should be a Coke machine that is just a dial and the dial goes from like zero to 100. And you can choose what percentage of a real Coke you want. Like some, you could be like, dude, I don't want a Coke Zero. Like I've, I've been walking a lot today. Give me like a Coke 32. But then I realized, you know what the problem is? There's going to be some motherfucker at the machine who's going to be working at like the gas pump. And they're going to be like, they want Coke 27, but they're going to hit like 28 and then turn the dial and go like 26 and then 28 and then 26. Then they're going to get to 27, but they've been twisting it so much. They're like, uh, uh, I don't know, 28. They're like, oh, I had it. Well, I, was, I was on autopilot, 26. And you're going to be waiting there like, brother, it's an eighth of a gram of sugar difference, bro. You can't possibly tell the difference. I love it though. I, I can feel myself like how, how fun it would be to, it wouldn't be like a little dial too. Like it wouldn't be like an old stereo dial. It'd be like a fucking safe, like a, a bank vault dial. You'd go like, it'd be like a, it wouldn't be some digital, no haptic feedback piece of crap. Okay. And the most annoying guy you ever met would be like, bro, you can tell the difference. Coke 39 is the best Coke. Yeah, Coke 38 is pretty good. Coke 40 is a little rich for me, but Coke 39? No! <laughs> Coke 39 goes crazy. Hear me out. Two dials. One is sugar, one is carbonation. I could get down with that. There are times where you just want, like, TV static, to be honest. Like, there's some times I would take, like, like sugar one carbonation 100 that's the closest it gets to a cup of coffee but most of the time i mean i think i could easily i could be like a coke 10 guy and then like a carbonation like 70. i do i want it to be carbonated enough that i cannot chug the can like i i want one swallow to be as much as i could take without discomfort <laughs> we don't do that here okay would you ever do sugar 100 carbonation zero? Are you, you're asking me if I'm a hummingbird and the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedom says I don't have to answer that question. Sugar zero carbonation zero. That's <laughs> just <laughs> probably the, the worst tasting water you'd ever experience. What am I doing over here? Is this a different area? What's going on with the water wheel, man? What about a caffeine slider? Dude, a caffeine slider would go crazy too. If I could get a, a Coca-Cola with as much caffeine as like a grande Starbucks iced coffee, I would absolutely stop drinking coffee and just have a fucking charged lemonade Coke Zero every morning instead. It'd probably be worse for me, but I'm kind of embracing like uh, hedonism a little bit. I'm kind of uh, 
giving up on the vague idea of living better and instead accepting that my body uh, is a tool that my brain can use to experience positive sensations. Now, you got to limit it a little bit, of course. You, may, you might even have to limit it a lot because the tendency is to steer into the skid and approach oblivion. But you can always just... Um, you know, have a Coke 10 instead of a Coke Zero and then exercise for an extra nine minutes. You know what was pissing me off on the Disney Cruise too? So they have a great um, kids club where you can drop off your child. They have cool activities. And uh, then you come back in a couple hours and pick them up. Usually you get a message that's like, hey, your daughter would like to be picked up. And then you say, okay, just one more caperina and you go down. Um, but then they, ha they have open houses so that the parents, oh, he's dead, uh, and other children that are not of the target age demographic of that particular club can go and check out the facilities like with their kid and see uh, what it's like. So I kept taking my daughter to the open house, and they had Wii with Wii Sports hooked up, and I was like, I'm going to crush this shit. Show up at the open house, two 10 year olds played Wii baseball for like an hour and a half. I was just waiting for next. I'm not gonna walk over to the kids and say, hey, I got next. But like, come on, like, have some manners. Like, who raised you? And also, Wii baseball is like the worst of all the Wii sports games. Boxing is worse, okay, but they didn't have the nunchucks. You don't even get to field in Wii baseball. All the fielding happens by itself. Listen, number one is bowling, full stop. Number two, me personally, I say golf because there's a little bit of skill to it. You might say tennis, but for me, tennis is a little gimmicky. It's the game you go like, hey, I'm swinging a racket. That's cool. There's less nuance to it. I'm more of a golf guy, but it's golf two, tennis three, or tennis two, golf three. That's for sure. If you're going to play baseball, don't play the baseball like against your friend in real baseball. Play the, the home run derby. You don't get to field anyway. Stop, stop pretending you're playing small ball in a game for like six-year-old kids. Go do the home run derby and see if you can crank out 10 dingers in a row. If you can do that and go pro, more power to you. Anyway, long story short, I said, okay, that's my mistake. I showed up too late to the open house. Of course, they're going to bogart the Wii. Show up one minute, 9.31 a.m. of the open house. Same two kids. This time they're playing Wii golf. Man, those kids don't even know. I would have laid waste. You know how many drunken hours? How many like insanely hammered muscle memory firmware exists in my brain from Wii Sports? I, got, I still got the technique wired in there. Also, there's like a, a teen lounge that had an open house. I thought it was, I'm, I'm, put me in the water. This is important. I took my kid there day one during open house. I wanted to see what, what they got for like the 13 to 17 year olds, okay? I walk in, they got a Guitar Hero console or a, like arcade cabinet, just like the, the last one. I'm like, I'm gonna blow these kids' minds. I, I start playing something on the guitar. I think it was Sabotage. They don't have the whole track list. It's the arcade version. Realize that the yellow fret is stuck down. That's a non-starter. I'm like, okay, no big deal. I go over to controller two, start trying to play. The strum bar is broken. It doesn't work, man. The shit doesn't work. Then kids came over to talk to the counselor because they had a Nintendo Switch set up. And they said, hey, can you put on Smash for us? And the counselor said, unfortunately, Smash is not rated E for everyone. So we can't put it on during open house because there's kids here. I could have been a hero to a new generation of American children. They kept, they kept popping my damn balloon before I could even get it going, man. Anyway, here we go. Smash is E10, though? I don't know. I, I mean, my daughter was not 10. So I can understand they were trying to protect her from seeing Donkey Kong punch Kirby in the face. I, I'm serious. Listen, 14-year-old kid says, let's put on Smash. I shouldn't have gone this way. That's a problem. That kid's probably going to rinse me. Nine-year-old kid says, let's put on Smash. He's leaving in tears. Do you have a Smash main? Yeah, random. Random, 
But then if I get someone who has a, a menu in game, re random. Egg played Smash? I don't want to brag. Uh, Ultimate's probably my worst Smash, and I still win Elite. What's the soundtrack of Kirby's Dreamland then? You want to ask me anything about Smash 64 within reason? Uh, I'll tell you, maps that you don't play, Planet Zebes. My ass is not playing Planet Zebes. You let them pick the map, you let them pick the items, they're like hammers and pokeballs only on Planet Zebes. My ass getting Tekken juggled by the damn radioactive lava over and over, but they don't have the audacity to kill me? Come on, man. Woo! Who is the best Break the Targets character? Me personally, I don't know the answer to that question because I had friends, so I didn't play much of the single player. My guess is that you could either do some serious work with Fox as a result of his reflector, or alternatively, maybe Link with the boomerang and the bomb, you could get some serious work done. That's my guess. Who is the hardest metal character to fight? <laughs> okay, I'm assuming... It's been, why are you asking me questions about the single player, bro? Who's the most annoying character to play against? Uh, that's a gimme. It's 100% Kirby and Pikachu. You get killed by a Captain Falcon, you don't even sweat it. You say, you know what? You went nuts on the table mode. You hit me with a knee. You hit me with a Falcon punch. You hit me with a spike off the edge, whatever. You get killed by a Pikachu. It's just all like back kicks in the air. You get on the edge, you get up, you get kicked. You don't get knocked out of the edge. They do a, a little jump off the edge, give you a little kick. It doesn't kill you. You barely make it back. He gives you another kick. Come on, man. What input didn't exist in 64 and started in Melee? That's a Melee question. Um, I don't have an answer. I'm going to say C-Stick, the Smash Stick. Because it didn't have a Smash Stick. Side B. That's true. That's true. That's pretty true. Air dodge. There's a lot of stuff that didn't exist, honestly. Old heads know, man. Old heads knew what we had to deal with before wave dashing existed. You fucking kick the shit out of your friend in Smash. All of a sudden, he's like, oh, it's just because you're controller one. I'm controller two. Port priority owns you, little bro. Then you say, okay, let's switch controllers. You switch controllers, you beat his ass. He throws the controller on the ground, stomps upstairs. You're like... It's his night to cook dinner, bro. It's going to be awkward. It's not just awkward because he's mad. It's because he's going to have to apologize and be like, sorry, I got mad at a video game. And I'm going to be like, we've all been there, bro. Just relax. But stop putting disres disrespect on my name with this port priority nonsense. Your roommate made you dinner? Yeah, a couple times. It made some... Uh, are you familiar with... Me Goring? He was Dutch. And I guess uh, some Dutch cuisine is also influenced by and also influenced, like, Southeast Asian cuisine. I will say, though, it was pretty, like, he was like, I'm so excited to cook you guys dinner so you can taste this. And then my reaction when I thought he was going to buy a bunch of, like, ingredients from the store. And instead, he just opened up a package of spice mix and then poured it on top of some ground beef. <laughs> The stew is pretty good, don't get me wrong. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hello! Wow, what is that? A pipe A what? A pipe Can you hold it up to the camera? A little closer? A little right, right here. Right. Chat, what's this? A paisa. A paisa. It is, apparently it's a paisa. And it's cute. It's and cute? It, and it even has a chef hat and this is hot. An apple. It has an apple and a chef hat. Oh, this is so cute. So cute. This is the best surprise. It's the best surprise? Oh, Aww. Yeah. 
There's something under the paisa. It's a yellow thing. Oh, he has spots under him. That is so cute. Look at their face. Oh, so cute. It kind of looks like Tomo. Mm -hmm. Is this you? It looks like me, right? Yes. He's got the same back of the head. But can I tell you a secret? What? Daddy's back is hairier than that. Thank you. I'm, I'm trying to climb. It's really hard, though. Wow. I'm trying. I'm trying. The green rock, you can't really grab it. You want to see? This is what Ruka and Tomo are like when they want food. You ready? Yeah. Wait, I didn't do it right. Yeah. I still didn't do it right. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Is that still the same rock from 30 minutes ago? Diel Guiga, don't bait me. Isn't the S&P 500 in the same place it was uh, 30 days ago? Yeah, your ass probably, well, maybe you're still on paternity leave, but either way, your ass theoretically still goes to work every day. No work till August. He's embracing the European lifestyle and I love that for him. I should have a kid. You should, but I, listen. After being uh, on a boat with other families that are on vacation, I'm here to tell you something. I think you should stop at one. Every family I saw myself included that had one kid, it's like you're getting the spiritual nourishment that comes from parenthood, but not the incredible amount of stress that comes from managing two kids at the same time. One kid, two parents, when you're parenting at the same time, it's great. When somebody needs a break, one person takes off, they do their own solo thing for a bit, and you're one-on-one. You're -on -one. It's not like, you, you know, it's tough to manage. You're not outnumbered. I will say, this is yucking others' yums, but I think that because it is people that you make fun of, chat, you're going to agree with me, which is where we have to examine our own biases. When I saw people my age on the Disney cruise that were there without kids, I was like, brother, what are you doing here? You're really waiting in line for 45 minutes to take a picture with someone in a rat from Ratatouille costume? You're 35 years old with no kids and obviously some disposable income? Go get, do whatever you want, okay? But like, go get some culture or something. We're stuck here in a good way. I was very comfortable, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, like, we, the options have been like gated off to us for now as a result of the fact that we're traveling with a three and a half year old. We're making family memories. You guys could be, you could be taking a pill in Ibiza. Like, um, Mark Ronson? No, no, Mike, Mike, Mike Posner, thank you. <laughs> but it says go down. Do I trust it? Do I trust it? Hello, honey. I know it's Paisa. You told me about Paisa. You might fall down. Watch this. You ready for this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Daddy's pretty strong, right? Mm -hmm. Whoa. Oh, you ready for this? Wee. <laughs> I know, I'm climbing down, but it's like a dinosaur here. This, this, okay, careful, honey, don't get scared, okay? This has a skull on it, so it might be dangerous over here. They might try to scare us. Oh, I fell. I fell in the water. Is this what daddy looks like when he swims? No. Is daddy a good swimmer? No? I think... <laughs> Daddy's a pretty good swimmer. He's okay. What did you have for lunch today? Did you have a peanut butter jelly sandwich? 
And a cheese string. And a cheese string. And, grapes. and grapes. She was so tired yesterday. No joke, we were eating at the airport chilies in the Calgary airport. Again, big ups to Calgary. You think I'm being snobby about the chilies? I'm actually just happy that there were things that were open. Regardless, Kids Menu has a uh, grilled cheese sandwich on it. You gotta remember, this is we woke up at like 7 a.m. Florida time, and then um, when when did the mom phase start? We woke up at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. Florida time. It was like 2 a.m. Florida time at the time this dinner happened. So she was like insanely tired yesterday. Obviously, understandably. When we were at the Chili's, I said, honey, do you want a grilled cheese? She said, oh, man. Oh, man, no, I don't like grilled cheese. And I said, what do you mean you don't like grilled cheese? You eat like three grilled cheese a week and you like it. She said, no. That like hit me a little bit. I said, what is it? She says, I don't like grilled cheese. I like grilled cheese sandwich. And I was like, oh, sorry, sorry. I forgot, grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> Just orange, my mistake. Then I, when I ordered, I said, my daughter will have the grilled cheese. And then she like whispered in my ear. She's like, grilled cheese sandwich. I said, she'll have the grilled cheese sandwich. And she was like, he got me, let's go. Dipped in Mama Liz's Reaper oil. YYC, honestly, not that bad. Honestly, I was becoming a caricature of myself. I, I hate to admit it, Vancouver and Calgary have a, a bit of a rivalry. I say rivalry because I consider it to be good-natured ribbing. I make fun of them for being uh, yokels, and they make fun of us for uh, housing being insanely expensive. And I say, thank you, sir. <laughs> Because <laughs> I have one. You're basically complimenting me at this point. So basically, we always win when I construct the bit. Um, but when I was in the airport, I was like, brother, how is Vancouver winning best airport in Canada year after year? Because YYC kind of seemed, it was cooking it a little bit. It was bigger. It seemed like well, I mean, I only flew out like, or flew in once, but had like lots of, open restaurants, had a cool pentaveret style tram that took you from terminal to terminal. So I didn't mean why, why, no, why VR is the one that, it's Vancouver, that wins airport of the year in Canada every year. And I've always been like base, 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 because it, it clears fucking <laughs> Toronto. Toronto's bad. The great thing about Toronto, you're like, thank God it's not Montreal. Tram in an airport equals poorly constructed airport. Okay, Squeaks, listen, we already have one pedantic economics guy here, okay? It's me. And then the chatter that fulfills that role is DL Guiga. I think a tram in an airport can be... Sometimes I think it's necessary. You ever realize, like, how amazing an airport is? I don't know if I can... I, I have to just hold it here for a second. The inside of an airport is so mysterious to me. You go to the ticketing agent, you boop, scan your boarding pass, you give them your suitcase, they put it on a conveyor belt, the conveyor belt gets sucked up into the back. You then go through security, get on your airplane, fly, land, and then you see a conveyor belt coming out from the guts of the airport that brings your bag back to you. What is, I mean, I understand that it's not conveyor belts like all the way. Like, they put it on the plane. But at the same time, I'm like, what? This must be a fucking mess back there, bro. Yeah. And you're not allowed to see it at all. You're not allowed to go back. I was kind of pleased yeah. with YYC. Yeah. I was not pleased with the Orlando airport. There's still... Yeah. Something's not right there, okay? Now, listen. It took us an hour. We landed at 1240 yeah. a.m. last week. It took us an hour for our bags to come out on the conveyor belt in Orlando. Oh, that's the airplane. The, the, the airline handles that, not the airport. Oh, really? Because the same airline seems to be getting your luggage out in five to ten minutes when you're at any other airport in the world. The Orlando airport, apparently not. 
YWG is hilariously bad. Bro, listen, I know you're probably not, never going to go here, but try flying into YGK sometimes. What's YGK? Uh, Kingston, Ontario, bro, population 120,000. You know how they say show up three hours before your flight or two hours if it's domestic? You could literally show up probably like 30 seconds before your flight. I think it's an airport where you could actually tell them to just hold. The, you could call and be like, I'm going to be two minutes late. Can you just hold the plane? And they'd be like, sure, no problem. Like the same person does the ticketing and then does the security and then is at the gate scanning your boarding pass. And it all took place within like five minutes. And you're like, what are you? You really need to scan this again? Like I literally just got it from you like <laughs> less than 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I know my seat. It's four. You don't... Yeah. Hey, four. Oh, that's on the right side of the airplane. Yeah, I know. It's the only side with seats on it, bro. Let me guess. It's uh, just behind number three and in front of number five. Oh, no, no, my bad. There is no number five. That's the lavatory. I do think... Like, this was my tweet in the, in the Uber on the way to the airport. I think a, a tier list of months would go crazy. I also realize that like half of the people replying to that tweet are literally like 14 years old. Why does so many people go like, yeah, like March is pretty good, but the best month is like month that has my birthday in it. Like, I, I guess like live your life. I didn't realize I was the only honest individual. As a Canadian, my birthday is in November. And I'm content saying November is an unremarkable month colder than October in a bad way, no holiday except for American Thanksgiving and Remembrance Day. And then it's got Halloween just before it, so you're coming off of a high and going down to nothing. And then it's got the Christmas holidays right after it, so it's just kind of like this little dopamine valley where I'm like, outside of my birthday, November, it ain't got much. I was happy to see there was basically a consensus the worst month is February, and January is close behind. Like, January at least has New Year's. February has nothing, man. February is just like, it's like the, the surplus month, where we're like, how many days do we need to round out the year? It's cold as fuck. People are like really getting excited for Groundhog Day. Come on. <laughs> it's ridiculous. March, the, March, you compare it to May. If we went May to March, we would be like, March sucks ass. But the fact that we're going February to March makes March seem amazing. Sun's so bright right now. Yeah, it's raining, but like the weather's pretty nice. It always feels better to ascend out of winter than to descend into it. Like if it's 10 degrees Celsius in March, you're saying, brother, maybe it's shorts weather. Maybe it's shorts and, and t-shirt weather today. When it's 10 degrees Celsius in October, yeah. you're like, I needed my winter coat. Yeah. Like this, it's, there's a very different feeling depending on the way, that you, the direction that you enter the temperature. Top tier months, I, I mean, I, I feel like most people are going to be on the same page. The best yeah. month of the year, if, if you're being honest, the best month of the year, I only take you seriously if you say May, June, or July. May... Beautiful scenery, beautiful weather, certainly not too hot. June, same thing, but then sometimes you also get uh, perhaps a vacation or perhaps school is not in session anymore. Even though, you know, I, I've been conditioned to think of like the end of June, at least in Canada, as like uh, something to be excited about just because of the fact that, you know, there was like, 20 years of going to school where that was when we finally got summer vacation. July, July for me feels like peak holiday season. August also great, but sometimes it can be a little too hot. Depends on where you live. It's very weather dependent, but I, I think like the summer months in the Northern hemisphere go crazy. Spring and fall are, are in competition next. What's crazy though, is that like, it's kind of like Shohei Otani and, and Mike Trout on the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Like the winter months suck ass, but December is the only month that comes close to being an MVP contender. Depending on the industry and the role in which you work in, you might get two weeks off. You see your family, you give presents, you get presents, you eat yummy food, you cuddle up by the fireplace, everything's festive, et cetera, et cetera. 
November, definitely not it. January, not it. February, probably the worst month. And then spring and fall, I think this, you know, it's dealer's choice. September's kind of nice. Like those first few days of it being a little chilly are nice. Until you remember that you're like, this is the best weather we're going to have until like five months from now. <laughs> we make these. I love the cold guy who lives in San Diego. Listen, though, librarian, I'll level with you. When I was in um, San Diego last October or last November, I guess, it was cold as fuck. Like West Coast cold. Like I was like, I was wearing a, a sweatshirt and I was like, I should have brought a jacket. Like you're California, bro. <laughs> Be hot. Why are you always talking to a librarian and not regular chatters? Ask better questions. Make better comments. <laughs> God, <laughs> hurtful. I don't know. Why am I always fucking calling my parents instead of just like a random person? Because I have uh, respect for them. We have a uh, uh, acquaintanceship or a relationship that where communication, you know, it comes easily. Of course. And now I have size 32 feet. Chat, could this possibly be real? Is that like Guinness... Guinness records worthy? Yeah. Like, that's, that's huge. Oh, size 32 Europe? What is size 32 Europe, bro? Is, isn't European shoe sizes are just centimeters? Me trying to maintain my angry uh, voice while realizing that's like a way saner way to do it. I'm like, size 45, I don't know what the, oh, centimeters? Yeah, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Instead, I got to go, in, in North America, every shoe is a different size. People are like, what shoe are you? And I'm like, I wear anywhere between an 11 and a half to a 14, depending on which motherfucker made it. Hang on, it's so makeable. Can I tell you something, by the way? Maybe this will save you. We've saved people a lot. One thing that, that we've saved people with, oh, I'm about to get scared, aren't I? was telling them that um, if you get frequent sores in your mouth, check and see if your toothpaste has an ingredient called SLS. It's like sodium lauryl sulfate or something like that. It's commonly used in tooth whitening toothpaste. A certain per That's fine. A certain percentage of the population uh, their mouth gets very irritated by it, and it leads to very painful sores in the mouth. Someone in chat saved me when I was talking about it. Um, and now I like to pass on that information as much as possible. Now, here's another piece of advice I'm going to give you. I hated going skiing. Because every time I went skiing, uh, I have like a pretty big foot, I'll admit. Not, and I'm not bragging, it's actually like part of the annoyance here. Uh, I would get ski boots, and after like an hour of skiing, it would feel like my toes were so uh, in pain that they were going to fall off. And then some people would say, that's normal. And some people would say, no, you actually need to go a size up in your boot. And I said, that makes sense. My shoes probably are hurting my toes because they're too small. Went up a size, same problem. Went up a size, same problem. Went up a size, same problem. And now I'm up there, like, I'm, they're really like, you need a size 13 and a half ski boot? Like, you're fucking 5'10", bro. Why are you lying here? It's weird. We have friends who, uh, one of them is a, a hobbyist skier. And I said, yeah, I used to, like, go skiing now and then, but it hurt my feet so bad that I just decided like I'd take up snowboarding instead because the boots are softer. And then she's like, oh yeah, that happens all the time. It means your boots are too big. That's some information that maybe would have been useful to the 19 year old Australian kid who's given everybody their ski boots. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Every time I have ski boots, they hurt. And they're like, oh, it sounds rough, mate. You read that's like, oh, the one tip you should know, man. It turns out, your, if your feet are going numb and hurting a lot, you need to get smaller boots so that your feet don't move around and bump into the toe and constantly, like, you know, cause pain there. <sighs> 
little did it work? Well, I don't know. I started learning how to snowboard in January of 2020, and then the rest is history. <laughs> Why, what happened? Yeah. Well, like, you know, I snowboarded a few times and I was, I wouldn't say I was like learning how to do it very well, but I was starting to make a little bit of progress. And then we were like, you know, next season, maybe I'll take it more seriously. And then COVID happened and kicked off for like two years. In that period, we also had a child. I'm like, I wouldn't say I'm more nervous than the average person, but like, I'm not one of those people who's going to take, like, our daughter's three and a half now. She's a little older, but I'm not taking my one or two-year-old to the fucking ski hill. It's insane to me that you're allowed to go to the ski hill, and it's just kind of like buyer beware. Like, you don't have to pass a test or, or anything. Skiing is way more fucking dangerous. It, at least it feels more dangerous than driving, bro. And you got to go through some serious red tape to learn how to drive, which, by the way... I'm four. But like you literally just press the pedal to go and you press the pedal to stop. And like on skis, you're like pizza and french fry. But you like the pizza doesn't work all the time. Sometimes you really got to dig your feet into the crust. And then you're like, uh, you're skiing like through trees basically like even the the tracks that are like well maintained you're like one sneeze away from going over the edge and like being face down in a in a snow pile or something like that or smashing your head on a tree trunk helmets exist oh well i guess nobody's ever been injured or killed skiing then you know two can play that game helmets exist motherfucker <laughs> discourse andy you in debate club in the ninth grade helmets exist a plus. Nobody's ever tried that technique before. Shouldn't we all wear helmets when driving? I don't know. It's one of those things where I'm like, I don't think it could help. <laughs> that, yeah, you're right. That's what the airbag is for. Oh, Skiing is actually not that dangerous. Well, here's the thing. I, I agree with what you're saying. You know, probably tens of millions of people do it every year and don't get injured but at the same time it kind of is that dangerous on the scope of like comparing it to other activities that people tend to do like you're when you're skiing at any given point you're like one leg cramp away from possibly being in a dangerous situation I was feeling like that when I was swimming too I did a lot of swimming while we were on vacation I can swim the when you're a kid, you like, I don't know, you're just buoyant. And also, like, in better cardiovascular shape, and you weigh a lot less. As an adult, there were some times where I was like, <laughs> Like, man, I'm getting kind of winded out here. And then you look around, and you're like, uh, well, I guess it's like, like your body sends you a, a quick little lightning bolt that's like, are you going to die today? And you're like, I'm going to try not to. And then it's like, okay, here's some, here's some adrenaline. And then you're like... You get, you know, your wife and your daughter are chilling on the beach. You get back and you're like, <laughs> you're hiccuping. <laughs> hey, how was it out there? It was good. It was good. I had a good time. So relaxing. So relaxing. I'm very comfortable in the water. But it's more like I'm not even necessarily suggesting that they're dangerous. But I think that, like, it's insane to me. Well, I think, A, I think they are dangerous, and I think some people are being disingenuous. But I also think the fact that they don't make you take the necessary precautions to prove that you know how to ski before you get on the mountain is fucking insane. Now, I don't know how they would implement it. I'm merely being an observing problems Andy, not an offering solutions Andy. But it's, I, I learned to ski on a field trip when I was like 10. When you're a kid, you just fall down, get back up again. You're never going to keep me down. Kate was like, before you, it'd been 15 years since I went skiing. She was like, do you want a lesson? I was like, no, I know how to ski. You go up the fucking gondola, start skiing. I'm like, I don't know how to, how the, the fuck to ski. <laughs> and the trail is like wide. And some of the trails are really, really wide. But even then you're like, you got to rely on people to take like a consistent uh, path, like a predictable path. Because no disrespect. Really good skiers, you guys are annoying as fuck. I'm sure some of you are like very 
professional and you're like, I'm going to give newcomers like a wide berth. But some of you are like shithouse drunk or on mushrooms and are just zooming down the mountain at like Mach 500 coming like a centimeter away from everybody else on the ski hill is very intimidating as somebody that's, that's trying to learn the damn ropes. And here's the thing. I wish I wasn't there either. <laughs> I, I wish there was like a more self-contained environment where they were like, you got to Gran Turismo and get the C-class license before we like, you should, you should have to like scan a QR code that they give you when you've proven proficiency and then the chairlift opens up to you. The fact that they let you make the mistake of going up the mountain is crazy. You need a license to ski? Well, I'm just saying, you know, like for the safety of everybody, it would probably help. If you, like, there should be, here's what I'm thinking, okay? There's a proficiency ski hill. When you ski down it, the instructor, there's like a guard at the bottom that watches the whole time. If you make it to the bottom and you appear to be comfortable, they give you the password. They go like Stroopwafel. Then you go to the ski chair and you got to say the password in order to, for the chair to open up. Otherwise, they put you on the lift that goes to the proficiency uh, hill. And, on, and you can do the proficiency hill as many times as you want. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. The other thing is like there's like activities where if you get in like over your head, you just back the fuck out, right? You're like, I'm not built for this shit. I'm out. If your ass is like, I'm going to run a marathon and then you get a mile into the run and you're like, I don't know how to run. You just walk off to the side and like disappear into the crowd like Kaiser Soze. If you go up the gondola like and you ski a little bit down, there's only one fucking direction you can go, dude. Your ass is not going to climb back up the hill to get on the gondola and ride it down. You got to ski down to either the bottom of the hill or the next gondola station. Like, you, you got to go, man. I've walked before and it's miserable. My fingernails hurt just from watching that. I, I mean, I, I don't know if I've walked down a ski hill, but I've definitely, like, gone up to the top of Whistler and then skied, like two legs of the 17 legs down and been like, brother, fuck this. And then just gone and rode the gondola down to the bottom yeah. instead. I mean, I like the sensation of skiing. It's just kind of like, sometimes it's just too intense. Like you give me the choice, so I'd rather like, you know, be in the chalet, eating a pulled pork sandwich or like possible, like thinking that I'm gonna get a concussion every 10 minutes when I'm out on the mountain. My toes feeling like they're going to fall off. I'm like, just give me the pulled pork sandwich, bro. Snowboarding kind of fun, though. I kind of like snowboarding. I'll stay on the bunny hill all day. But the other thing is, risk-focused uh, uh, Andes don't understand the thrill that comes from uh, meditation. Even as a kid, I was like this. Learn how to ski on the bunny hill. Master skiing on the bunny hill. People are like, why don't you go to the blue circle? Why don't you go to the green circle? Well, I, don't, I don't know the shapes, right? I say, brother, I just achieved mastery on the bunny hill. I'm, I, I'm enjoying the serenity of mastery. I know every nook and cranny on this bunny hill. I know the parts that are iced over because that's where all the lessons took place. I know the parts where the sun is hitting and it has melted the powder a little bit. You get a little extra speed on that. This is my home. Like it's... Uh, the, the otter and the beaver are my friends, you know? And we are all connected to another in a loop and in a cycle that never ends. And then they're like, no, why don't you, why don't you start from square fucking one on a hill you've never seen before? Brother, this is, my, this is my garden. Are you crazy? You can take it too far, though. I definitely, I'm the kind of guy who will, like, be scared of a roller coaster and then like ride a roller coaster and be like, that was sick. I'm just gonna ride this one over and over. But I'm like, I think that's fucking kind of sick, bro. <laughs> Something cool about that, in my opinion. <laughs> you know what to expect. I think you gotta ride a roller, if you're scared, you gotta ride a roller coaster twice, bro. The first time is just to get over the fear and the second time is to really appreciate the flavor. I think, in fact, I think you're going to ride it twice.
So dumb, oh, motherfucker. <laughs> Are they making um, insane roller coasters that almost kill people still? Or is that like a 90s, 2000s thing? No, only airplanes. Bro, come on. The Boeing executives are in my chat, okay? There was just a couple of instances where the door fell off mid-flight or the, <laughs> the landing gear fell off when they landed or whatever. The window came off on one of them. I know this is like a little monka s, okay? But the videos of the airplanes where either someone opens the emergency exit door or the door or the window falls off, there's something about it that's so fucking funny to me. Like the people in the seats, like they can't do anything, but they're not doing anything. And that, I think that's where the humor lies. Because they're like in an airplane and the wind is going, this is like minus 50 degrees Celsius wind whipping at like 500 kilometers an hour. And they're just sitting in the seats like. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you're going to say like, what do you want them to do? And that's what they can't do anything. But like, you're like, what would you do in that situation? I'm like, I would do the same thing. But I, I'd like to think that when I landed, I would be like, how about that? That was something, huh? There's something about it, man. I don't know how to describe it, but it's like, it's just something you don't see. Oh my God. It's something you don't see every day. Like the, the Korean flight where the dude opened the emergency exit and there's just the two dudes holding onto the armrest while like their hair whips around them at... Mach 17 and they keep looking at each other like what are you what are you even thinking you're like what are we doing here man <laughs> like, what is, you can't do anything though like what are, you, what are you supposed to do do you think the pilot's not landing he's landed as fast as he can it's just there's some inherent like absurdity to it that's very funny to me, to me. also why the fuck are so many people opening the doors in mid-flight <laughs> Stop it, bro. You know what I'm realizing is I was always told or operated under the assumption that the, because of the pressurization in the cabin, you physically cannot open it. I'm realizing that that's just something the flight attendants told people so that they never tried. Because it turns out like pretty average dudes are just ripping that shit open. No matter, like it, it can't be that hard. Like, it wasn't Brian Shaw. He's got something to live for, right? Like, it's just a guy who got on the airplane. What kind of guy are you? Well, I'd like to think at a low enough altitude, I could crank that thing open. I wouldn't, because, like, I mean, A, I don't want to, and B, I don't think that's fair to the other 200 people that are just, like, trying to get home <laughs> or go on vacation or something. Like, let me, I, I'm no longer afraid of flying. Um, I used to be, and then much like the roller coasters, I did it enough where now I'm like, it's fun. Yeah. Or at least uh, there's things to enjoy about it. But like, if the worst part of my latent airplane anxiety, I'll actually say something in the airplane to myself like this. It's like, if I'm going to die in a plane crash, please God, let it either be on takeoff or Vancouver, or takeoff or landing in Vancouver. Let me at least die, like, at home. Can you imagine if, like, I would be pissed if I died on, like, the first leg of a trip that had, like, two layovers. You're like, my ass really was trying to get from Orlando to Vancouver, and I died in a plane crash in Minneapolis? That's fucked up. That's not, that's not where I started or where I was going. You're like, my ass didn't even want to be in YYC, and then all of a sudden, it's so, oh, I was decapitated in an overhead luggage bin snafu while taxiing at Calgary International Airport. No, thank you, bro. Let me, let me experience a rapid depressurization of the cabin on approach to YVR or something like that. Apparently, the guy who opened the door on the Korean air flight said he couldn't breathe and he wanted to get off the airplane faster. 
No joke. I'm not saying you have to hand it to them, but they should just open the emergency exit doors during deplaning. That's not an emergency, though. Well, if, if it's not an emergency, it's just a door. But I think, can I? I got a bone to pick, man. Why do we have so many doors in society that say emergency door, alarm will sound? And then when you open it, no fucking alarm sounds, bro. Even the doors are lying to us now. Like, I need to leave. Now I got to walk down a staircase and out like 17 different foyers just to get to a door that doesn't say the alarm's going to go off. They're silent alarms. Okay, then, like, I give a fuck. Let your silent alarm go off. What are they going to do? Arrest me for using the wrong door to get out of the Kennedy Space Center? I don't know how the law works in America. <laughs> Neither do the police. Oh, man, you got me. Have you actually opened those doors, though? Yeah, well, here's my experience. In college, I started opening those doors when appropriate, right? I would say one in eight actually have an alarm attached to them. And honestly, it's a, it's a boy who cried wolf situation. Sucks for anybody who had their um, serenity ruined by that alarm going off. You should tell the fucking door manufacturers to stop crying wolf. If eight out of eight of them had an alarm that actually sounded, my ass would not be opening that door. When there's a, an 86% chance that no alarm's gonna go off, you show me the incentives, I'll show you the outcomes, brother. Also, can I tell I, I, I've mentioned many times before how I, I rolled a nat one on my charisma on this vacation. On the flight from Calgary to Vancouver, you know, it's late. Everybody's tired, including the staff. We've been ascending for six, seven minutes, right? It's a little rocky, but my bladder is going to explode. I look up, no seatbelt sign. Nobody else is up. I say, fuck it, nuts on the table. I'm going piss. I walk back to the lavatory. I see that the flight attendant is still strapped into the damn jump street like the Dark Knight Rises. He gives me one look and says, sir, you have to sit down. He like, like I'm an idiot. He was like, sir, you have to sit down when the seatbelt sign is on. I looked at him. I looked at their display. There's no seatbelt sign. And I just shrugged my shoulders and went back to my seat. And then that same dude was doing the like drink and snack service. And uh, he said, can I get you guys anything? I said, sure, I'll have a Diet Coke. Um, and then when he handed it to me, at the exact same time he handed it to me, he had three cookies in his hand. I didn't know that in advance. I said, and can I get some pretzels? And the dude's face went from like the fake smile to like a very serious, neutral tone. Because um, he's like, I'm really giving this guy three cookies. And he said, and some pretzels. And then when I took the pretzels, I said, thank you. And he said, no problem. Is there anything else? And I said, nah, I'm good. I don't think he realizes that, like, I know how to fly, like, as a passenger on the airplane. It's actually very easy. It was the pilot that made the mistake by not turning on the seatbelt sign. And I'm being unfairly judged as being entitled to the piss of my own bladder because the passenger did, or the pilot didn't turn the seatbelt sign on. He probably didn't give a shit. Nah, man, he was pissed. <laughs> also, I think they've made the conduct of flights too safe. You can't fucking do anything. I feel like you should be able to piss whenever you want on the airplane as a you have to be in the bathroom obviously with the toilet seat up but like i think it's it's the skier's rule it's buyer beware if you got turbulence but you got a piss what are you supposed to say your bladder is full you're like hey just a second buddy there's an indeterminate period of turbulence here because we're going we're flying through the fucking air i mean i get you could like yell at me it's never happened to this extent because i'm an adult so i go pee before i get on the airplane too but like feel like you just got to eat it sometimes. They're like, sir, you can't go to the bathroom. And you're like, I, you got to stop me. Then you got to wait 20 minutes because some motherfucker's cooking shrimp scampi in the airplane toilet. You're so right. You got to kick that fucker out. The dude's probably giving him pretzels and cookies, not even stressing out about it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I 
wasn't even holding the button that time, man. I'm rebelling. I'm I'm not pissing whenever I want. I, I don't want to, you know, be a square peg. But I'm I'm genuinely I I think I'm becoming the guy that's breaking all the rules. Well, at at the very least, let me tell you my philosophy. I am no longer following rules that were put in place exclusively to deter bad actors when I'm not a bad actor. If a rule is just in place to ensure compliance for no reason, I will not be doing it. But that's okay because it's not a problem. I'm, I will not be putting my phone into airplane mode unless it's low on battery. I will not be doing the survey after a call with an AI customer service representative from Gaylord Palms Hotel in sunny Kissimmee, Florida. Why not? Because fuck you, that's why. I don't want to. <laughs> Is doing a survey a rule? Listen, buddy, it's not a fully realized worldview yet. I'm, I'm figuring it out as I go, okay? I got a lot of stuff that they don't come up with the campaign in like one day. Unless you're Vivek Ramaswamy, in which case. I hope that that was only one day or day one. Right, Squeaks? I don't know if you're still here. And I'm sick of the, all the signs in the bathroom telling me what to do. How you think I'm going to take advice from someone that can't even make like doors that don't have three inch gaps? So everybody looks at my cock while I'm in the toilet taking a diarrhea shit. You're not a, a, a trusted source for information. You can't even make a door that... What, what are people doing in these bathrooms, man? Why are all the locks broken? Why are the toilets never flush? Why are the dudes horking 85% of a 90-minute flight? Like, what, what happened to society, dude? I forgot what I was talking about. I think we did pretty good, man. We've been live for almost five hours, and I, I barely forgot that I had spent two weeks, like, only uttering like uh my dessert order i think we did pretty well man well in quips that didn't really go off but you were only gone for a week well hey uh, for once i'm doing what you guys do i'm counting the saturdays and sundays as well so it's almost two weeks you had the wrong crowd you're telling me brother you will not catch my ass heading down to the walt disney theater at 8.45 p.m. to see a dude who won Las Vegas Comedy Magician of the Year two years running. It's just not going to happen. But he fucking slayed, apparently. People were saying it was a once-in-a-lifetime. I'm not even knocking the guy with his Michael Scott energy, okay? He had a, a very receptive audience. Me trying to do the open mic on the cruise, but it's all bits about how I have disdain for my fellow passengers, even though we're all in this together. Have you ever noticed... That the people that move the slowest are in the biggest hurry? <laughs> they would throw me overboard for sure. But there is some truth to that, bro. I don't know what it is. You're like in a line with people. And you're moving like... I'm moving as fast as the dude in front of me is moving. He's moving as fast as the dude in front of him is moving. And then dude just gets behind you and goes like, can you believe this? And I'm like, brother, of course. It's a cruise full of old guys. It's 7 a.m. and the buffet opens at 7. We're all, we're all going, of course. You know, when they get up there, you'd think they'd be fucking the flash, right? But instead, they go, oh, do I want dark roast? Or light roast. And what kind of coffee? I've only had Folgers for the last 32 years. What do I want? Colombian or Sumatran? And you're like, it's the same carafe, man! Hi, honey. Nice cup! Let's see how it drinks. Show me. Whoa, it's like a, a curly straw. Did you see that? Can you hold it up to the camera? You're like right, right here. Ooh. <laughs> whoa, 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 don't stand on the garbage can lid, please. Are, are you Oscar? Wow, so cool, so cool. What did they say to it? They said, wicked. 
They said, that's amazing. Also, then the dudes on the cruise, they get like the coffee cup and then they put the milk in it and then they go to the, the sugar and the cream and the Splenda and the Sorbitol and the Stevia and, the, it, and they examine it like it's a, a wine cellar. Hmm, what, what would be the best sugar or fake sugar to put in my coffee this morning? Am I in a Stevia in the raw mood today? Certainly, it couldn't be nothing or just a little bit of regular sugar. That, that's bad for you. Instead, hmm, can I get a little bit of simulated? And, and then they put the stuff in and they stir it, but they don't move away from the place where you grab the stuff so that other people could have the luxury of having the same choice that they have. There's a little counter behind them where they're supposed to put the cup and then they stir and put the lid on. Instead, they're doing it in front of the carafe and you're like, brother, there's a little spot to the side. Everybody wants coffee. You're not the, you think you're the only dude who likes coffee? Not a relatable bit. Listen, I can't say what I want to say because of the fact that um, my child is right next to me. Why is the onus on the streamer to be relatable? How about you start living life like me? Instead, the onus is on me to construct a, a single sentence that the entire population of Earth can relate to simultaneously. That's unrealistic. How about if you want to get more meat out of the bone here? You start living like I do. You know what I'm saying? No. Nope. Nope. She said no. Now that's relatable. What are you? What are, what am I? I'm climbing this mountain here. What are you wearing in your back? Um, this is called a loincloth. What's a loincloth? It's a little piece of cloth that covers your bum. So true. Ready? Watch this. Ooh. <laughs> Pretty good, right? <laughs> Watch this. What's this? You know what this is? This is a gas pump. A gas pump. A gas pump. Un pump. De gas. De gas. All right, I'm just saying silly words. You don't need to copy that. <laughs> are you laughing at daddy or are you laughing at your straw? I'm laughing at you. Yay. Go, da, da, go, da, da. I'm doing my best, okay? My arms got crossed a little bit, though. Oh, he's good. He's good. Watch this. There's not even any need to be swinging here. Make good decisions. Ooh. 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 Ready? Oh, no, I fell. Just kidding. Okay, I need your help, chat. Where do, where do I go from here? Look at it. I'm like, I have to answer a question. Hello? I know, the, I know the answer. Up one. Okay. Oh, no, I'm falling. You know what he says when he, when he falls down? Ouch. Wahoo. like to see a two-time comedy magician of the year get this kind of reaction. Three. <laughs> two. One. <laughs> I think I gotta put a, sla a slash marker in there. We're gonna have to make some progress tomorrow. My tree! My tree! My tree! <laughs> It's so funny that, like, chat is laughing at this, and they're like, wow, like, the mind of a child is so innocent. But it's like, what do you think you are, bozo? You're watching the same thing, and going, ha, 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 it's just a little bit more sophisticated. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Daddy, you love me, buddy. Oh, man. Hey, <laughs> hey,
Oh, man. pretty, pretty cool game, right? Goodbye. Can you swim down? Of course, watch this. <laughs> and we're stuck. I'm climbing my rock. I'm climbing my rock. I'm the fastest climber there's ever been. No one will ever climb better than me. Oh no! I'm climbing my rock. I'm climbing my rock. I'm the best climber out. Oh! She's got tears in her eyes. <laughs> I can make it. I can make it. I can make it. I can't make it. I can make it. I can make it. I can make it. I can't make it. Oh, thank you. Okay, let me see. Okay, here's how we do it. I'm climbing my rock. I'm the best climber in the world. No one will ever climb better than me. I'm gonna be the best climber in history. I'm climbing, I'm climbing. Oh no! What is he doing? Look, it's, it's your hula dance, honey. That's why you're not supposed to sit on the garbage can lid. You couldn't make it far? You're at the start? Two different kinds of chatters right here. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my impression of... Well, I can't do Jose. it yet. <laughs> impression of Jose? <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do an impression of whoever Jose is. <laughs> Oh, no way, Jose. No way, Jose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you ready for this? Okay. It's my impression of Ruka and Tomo when we close our door at night. Okay, that one, this is why they go on tour. This is why comedians go on tour. Some of the jokes that you think would work do not work. But sometimes you just got to go like this. You just got to go, I'm the best climber in the world. I'm the best climber in the world. Oh, no, I'm out. And we got him back. And here's Ruka when we try to take him to the vet, but he doesn't want to get in his cat carrier. I'm the best climber in... Oh, no! All right, let's... Let's throw a little slash marker in here then. <laughs> slash marker. Are you going to stream? Okay. 
a to-do list. That was scratch. Man. I got my own to-do list, but I guess I'll put this one on top of it. I don't want your, I don't want your orange juice. I want to drink it. Mmm, it's so yummy. I didn't even drink it. I was only pretending. Mmm. <coughs> she fell for it again. <laughs> Rusted. You say busted? No, rusted. Rusted? Rusted. <laughs> <laughs> You say roasted? No, boasted. Boasted? <laughs> what is boasted? You're the one who said it. Fathers are so blessed. I didn't feel that blessed on the two flights we took yesterday. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I mean, I felt blessed in like a... If you make the time scale long enough, yes. But it, in the moment, no, I did not feel blessed. Roasted that. Mmm. I don't know what you're talking about. Roasted snack. <laughs> roasted snack? Why did you say mmm? Mmm. Why did you say that? Mmm. Why did you say that? A hemomancer. Hmm. Mmm. Pixie. Pixie, what is pixie? Hmm. A lycanthrope. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's not that funny? This is funny? A sorceress. No. When you fall, it's funny. Oh, good luck, because I'm never going to uh, fall again. Look at how fast I'm climbing. I'll never fall again. Whoa! No! Look, I'm like a little spider. Look at how fast. Whoa! No! Where am I going? Where am I going? Where am I going? Okay, go, 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 go. Oh. 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 <laughs> the role of the comedian is to be the truth teller. To say the uncomfortable things that society won't even admit about itself even yeah. when they're by themselves. Yeah. And in doing so, Revealing uncomfortable truths about the human condition. Oh no, I fell! <laughs> oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Spider, 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 spider. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's an understatement. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Look at he's oh he's quick he's quick with it now he's quick with it. Said business. Said business. I better not fall now. It's a long fall. It's a long fall. Oh 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 oh. Do do. Let me, let, you leave the jokes to me, okay? <laughs> okay, okay. Let's send chat over to... Mommy, I'll see you tomorrow. As they say, bye. Baba. Baba. Will you play with me? Of course. Hear me out here, guys. It's been stuck in my head. Alanis Morissette voice, okay? What it all comes down to is that everything's gonna be fine, fine, fine. Cause I got one hand on my penis and the other one is squeezing my ball sack. 
I'm soft, but I'm gooning. I'm hard, but I cannot come. I'm, <laughs> I'm home and I'm gooning. I'm a shower, but it's frigid, baby. Cause what it all comes down to is that everything's gonna be fine, fine, fine. Cause I got one hand on my ball sack and the other one's tickling my asshole.